Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. Just for my audience, just so you guys know, I'm mirrored for some reason on my screen. I'll try to fix this next time, but uh, you can see the letters are backwards. But the merch store is now live. Anyone's curious? Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rationalnational.com okay, so maybe... slash merch. There you Wait, go. You, Look at that. You, you use a green screen, right? I use a green screen? Yeah. What gave it away? <laughs> um, well, I see, well, uh, but you're wearing the shirt wearing oh i know shirt. i know i know yeah it's it, it the affects the letters it's not gonna work when you want to promote it it works it just I'm trying to it works but you see the background <laughs> <laughs> oh i heard by the way i heard your promo before we went live when you were on your stream i i got the the notification on my uh in my on my phone what promo? and the great promo you gave us before we all got on was yeah i'm not gonna be here every thursday maybe uh, maybe i will that's I not know. what i said <laughs> that putting words in my mouth i said i will be here every week unless i can't because i have a child you have kids you know you know things happen too man i got two (laughs) so how the hell are you streaming to like two in the morning i don't know how you do what you do because they go to bed and they know when daddy closes this door you shut up and stay in the bedroom um so i was gonna say something uh I, i was thinking what a fun idea might be in, in these. We don't even know what this is yet. Uh, just that we have fun, like hanging out, uh, you know, uh, shooting shit, talking politics, getting fucked up, all those good things in life. Uh, I was going to say uh, a funny routine might be because we're playing into the memes. We're saying leftist mafia, talking about the woke mob, canceling all those stuff, using those words. The right wingers, conservatives always say about the left. Uh, we do a little thing where uh, we suggest someone that we cancel because we are the official SJW panel of lefties <laughs> that get to cancel and uncancel people. This is it. We are the committee. Like, like everyone talks about that secret oh. committee. This is we are that committee, so we can pick who is canceled and uncanceled. We each get a choice, and I don't want to put you all on the spot because I already have an idea. I was going to throw this one out. What about Helena Bonham Carter? Because, and here's my justification, uh, she's gone full turf, which really sucks. And it seems like every British person uh, either has to pick one side or the other. They can be awesome and not be turfs, or they can be turfs. Seems like Helena Bonham Carter has gone down that road. Also weird that both the villains, Bellatrix Lestrange and Voldemort, have both turned out to be transphobes. So, yeah. What? Wait, I thought, I Voldemort too? We were... Yeah, Vol- yeah Ralph Fiennes, unfortunately. Which sucks. Ralph Fiennes is awesome. I love Ralph Fiennes. Yeah. I don't know I shit about Harry gonna... Potter, so you all can do that. Yeah. That's <laughs> powerful. I was gonna say Kanye you know West. I'm like, I think Kanye West is the obvious one. I don't know. Well, we're gonna. That's what we're gonna talk about for the entire stream. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this is all anyone Folks, can talk we're, about. Yeah, we're, we're talking we're gonna about get there. everything. Yeah. <laughs> this is what everyone else we No, but I'm saying about. canceling. You have to cancel Kanye West. <laughs> oh, he's the canceled. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I thought he was already canceled. I, I thought oh, that was old news. Okay, I guess he's canceled. He went. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing from Kanye. I oh my god, I'm tired of hearing from Kanye. Like, yeah, good god, I've got Kanye Kanye's fatigue. It's it's, yeah, I'm well, sick, I'm everything sick ramped it. up tonight. <laughs> it's like yeah. you can't ignore it though, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, we can't we can't turn away. Like he's, he's Nick Fuentes, the neo Nazi, is meeting with the president of the United States now. Like shit is getting real. Even even if I don't want to like talk about him, it's just like this is the this is the timeline we live in. This is our reality. This is our world now. Yeah, I saw what uh, Ole was saying that like somebody said. Well, this just shows that Kanye's really fed up. Like what? How? How are you still defending him? He he went all the way. 
He straight up said he's a Nazi now. There's no more plausible deniability. He went there. This is the logical conclusion. If you defend him, you are defending a Nazi. I just, well, I don't get it. Look, say, I'm a fan of his music too. Say, I was. He, he, we got to be fair here. He didn't say that he was a Nazi. He just said that he no, loves he did. Nazis. <laughs> he said he <laughs> was a Nazi? He also okay, said like, I'm a Nazi. Yeah, yeah, he said he did. that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he Wait, said he loved. I, I that. There's like he hours of content. Not as no. far as the I love Hitler stuff, but like I, I haven't seen that. I love Hitler. I that, yeah. The man, look, oh, let's let's. I need us to not be in the upside down, okay? The man said he likes Hitler. Now let's take like if we were let's say we're in a court of law. Now if you stand accused of being anti-Semitic, stand accused of disliking Jewish people, and you come out. Say, really, there's something to be a fan of the person who commits mass genocide against said people. The man is guilty, okay? The man is guilty, <laughs> all right? We're sending him to proverbial jail, all right? Like, okay, <laughs> not real jail. No, nobody try and call me on no inconsistencies. I don't believe anybody should levy any criminal charges against Kanye. But I do <laughs> want, I do want him unable to travel, meet with folk, Send text messages, be on the internet. If, if, if Verizon, whoever is his provider, could cut him off, I would appreciate that. That's what I need mm -hmm. to happen. Well, and actually, one I thing think that he, would... I think he should. I think he should travel. Let's get him as far away as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> I need people to stop simping, though. Like, stop taking pictures with him when you see him. Boo him if you see him. Stop <laughs> running up and fanboying or fangirling. Like, you have to understand, folks. This isn't the person who you thought you knew. This is a Nazi now. You don't want a picture with a Nazi. No, you know, Mike, <laughs> Mike, I think that's an excellent point we should double back to. This is not the person that you thought you knew. When did we ever think we knew a likable Kanye? What era? That's true. Of yeah, I never. He, been... <laughs> he always rubbed something. He always was that guy. Like, maybe not the, I, the, I like the Nazi loving about Kanye. Enough to give him a lot of passes, though. You wish you would kill. You would kill for old Kanye. Oh, you wish Kanye was just pressing Taylor Swift out. You wish that's all he was doing. You would kill for like, oh, George, George Bush hates black people. What you would give to hear that? No one like excellent. He'd be spitting. If he said that present day, bars. Okay, what viral tweet? That's excellent. Excellent. We would love that. No, uh, I, I it wouldn't matter yeah, I anymore. It's too late. I, I, mm -hmm. I think yeah, I no, made this joke with you guys before, but I'm starting to think that the George Bush hates black people thing might have been an endorsement of George Bush back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems like it was maybe for yeah. attention, if anything, as opposed to him um, actually having my, a, a position. Mm -hmm. My my chat is screaming that Oli, I mean, your um, your mic apparently is on maybe a different setting. It's no? not the mic that you have before you because they're like her mic looks really oh, nice. And we're her is it still through. not working? Okay, no, Skype, figure, Skype is really Skype bad settings. where it yeah. doesn't, yeah, the audio, you gotta, like, for every call, you got to go in and change it. I got you. All right. Thank you all for telling me. I'm going to figure it out right now. Yeah, You're Skype right. defaults to the worst microphone that you have. Like, I have this microphone. Are we good? Y'all hear me now? My... Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me know if it's good. Oh, that's, that's super mic. clear. Yeah. Okay, no, good. Thank you. I'm sorry. It sounded fine before. But that's yeah, yeah, that's super crispy sounding. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great, excellent, excellent. All right, no one, no one talks shit. I did my best. <laughs> 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 Listen, they were they were on my head. Yo, they they messaged me. It's funny how people on the internet can do the like the most like minuscule thing in the most dickhead way they could. Let me tell you how they were messaging me. <laughs> they were like, align me. I don't know if you see those other little devices in the in in Lance, Lance and David and Mike. You you can see it. You notice you can see it. That that's a microphone. <laughs> you should go. I was like, that's. So <laughs> like y'all gonna stop fucking talking to me like this. <laughs> and you're that's gonna be, so messed. Want to be mad? Cause I'm like in my house. Like first of all, I I have a mic. I just don't have an adapter. I'm doing my best. <laughs> like, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> I was so I was so upset. Yo, I went to Amazon. Like, Get my fucking adapter. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if it, okay, if it makes you feel any better, so the first seven episodes of my podcast when I first started it, I had no idea I was recording through my laptop's microphone. Um, 
And on the very first episode, so I had a, a bearded dragon in my room, and we keep a cage with crickets. And so the chirping is just white noise. I don't even – it doesn't register on my mind, you know, when, you, when you're around it all the time. I didn't take them out of the room for the first episode. So in the very first episode of my show, you hear nothing but chirping and me from, like, a distance speaking with a microphone, but it's coming through my laptop. It was so embarrassing. And somebody finally, after, like, episode five, they're like, hey, the audio that you're recording – it's not through your microphone. It's it's through your laptop. I'm like, oh my god! And all it took was me like selecting, you know, whatever the microphone was. Uh, it was very very bad. So you did way better than than me. <laughs> Thank you. Your your embarrassment does make me feel better. Thank you for sharing. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny how we've come a long way. Yeah. Okay. Um. One of the things I do want to say yeah, on a serious note, when it comes to the the situation that we were all just talking about, is that like. Obviously, this whole train wreck and this dumpster fire uh, is is one thing and one thing just to witness. Uh, but the fucked up shit is I really hate seeing Nick Fuentes' little booger eating, cum hunting, smiling face. And, and and what I mean by that, by the way, is that he actually he goes into his roommate's rooms to look for semen. He has a black light that he goes because he's a weird neo-Nazi obsessed with like never masturbating. So he goes in other people's rooms with a black light to look for their semen. Yes, that's what his ex-roommates have said. Anyways, what? to see that neo Nazi. Wait, wait, in, are we yeah, dead? <laughs> That's I can't, true, I can't yeah. tell if we're being satirical because if that's real, no, no, no. This, this, this yeah, is okay, so I, I know it's I've never heard of this too. Oh, okay, I've heard so, yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm I'm really happy to put this out there and and give Ooh. you all a new revelation. Nick Fuentes has these are the two things he's known for. One, eating his boogers live on stream. That clip is still out there. The other one is that his roommates. <laughs> hold on, hold on, were basically, can you just like, say? Can, can you say boogers with your Canadian accent again? <laughs> 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 hey, there's two of us in here. <laughs> David, we gotta speak in code now, eh? Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Wait, Boogers. what are they saying? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so he apparently, according to his ex-roommates, was obs he's like one of those big like he's he's a proud person who calls himself an incel, MGTOW, all that kind of stuff. You know, he red pill shit. He calls himself an incel. He calls himself an incel. He has said on camera it is gay to have sex with women. He is he, he, <laughs> like these are the memes that he deals with. Yeah, I know, I know. I, 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 clip, I didn't think it was real. I was oh, like, it's real. Okay. No <laughs> <laughs> I grow, I, I grow weary. <laughs> like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I, I don't understand how someone like this, with, with all this video of them out there being like just e eating your boogers on camera alone. Like, how does yeah. that not automatically just destroy his ability to have an audience to gain any following? Like, how 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 does he go from eating his boogers to hanging out with Kanye West? Like, how does that? Yeah. <laughs> it's Alex so like, he Alex goes Jones. up in his career from doing this shit. Yeah. But that's that's the part that scares me, David. Is that like, fun and games aside, like Nick Fuentes would never be on Jimmy Kimmel. He's a he's a bit on Jimmy Kimmel now. He's on like he the normies know about him. Like the the fucking people who never like you know your your parents probably would have never known about him. He's becoming a household name thanks and to this because again. Thing. Yeah, they they they, yeah. they are smart enough to take advantage of this situation to be like, holy fuck, this is one of the most prolific artists of all time. This is one of the most powerful black men in America. Like, let's use this opportunity now to raise our profiles in ways we never could before. That that's the scary. Oh, he's, that's, that's he, he's 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 loving every minute of it. There's a clip the the clip on Alex Jones's show where uh, Kanye specifically says how he loves of what Hitler did. Um, mm -hmm. There's a wide shot where you see Nick Fuentes, and it really, this really like stuck with me. Like Alex Jones is sitting there going like, this is happening on my show. And uh, Kanye is doing this thing with his whole mask, his whole his mask on face covered. So the only face you really, that has like a giant like glow on it is Nick Fuentes sitting there, huge smile on his face as Kanye is saying this nodding along and I'm just like that little piece of shit like he's loving every minute of this this is exactly like he didn't plan this but everything he has done has led him to this moment it has the mm -hmm. universe has somehow worked out in the favor of Nick Fuentes and the thing is make no mistake these people do plan to 
find celebrities and use them for their causes. Like that's true on both sides of the aisle, right? As they find celebrities and public figures that you think will have, that have a platform that are willing to support your messaging and they align with them. Like that happens on like, make no mistake. That's very real. So it's not, you know, they, they're, they're able to capitalize on it because they were always prepared to capitalize on it so quickly in the first place. And the thing, and this is actually evidence of why it's so destructive. Like people like to engage in this silly conversation about whether or not, you know, Conte is actually an anti-Semite already believes it. Like someone quote tweeted me today um, on my video saying, you know, if you've been supporting Connie up until this point, refusing to believe that he's spewing anti-Semitism and he's a white supremacist, uh, you should feel stupid. And do you? And someone was like, oh, you know, y'all are ridiculous. Y'all think he's really anti-Semite. He's just saying things um, to, to push back on cancel culture. First of all, that's fucking stupid. But beyond that, let me, let's just say I accept the premise, right? Let's say I accept that premise that he is that's a fucking problem. Like, that's not a mitigating factor, right? Because at the end of the day, I don't give a shit whether or not Kanye believes it in his heart of hearts. What I care about is the fact that it's anti-Semitic and you are spewing and galvanizing anti-Semitism. People who want to hear that, people who already believe that kind of thing, people who want to be able to, to have some kind of fake alleged rational purpose to it are going to take that and they're going to run with that and actually endangers people. It's not like, oh, it's just a feelings thing. No, anti-Semitism, it leads to violence. It is a dangerous thing. Like, the, the things that you're invoking, Hitler is literally somebody who committed genocide. So I don't care. We live in a real world where people, there are people, there are Nazis, there are neo-Nazis, there are white supremacists, the exact people that you are ingratiating yourself with who want to hear that because that's the kind of messaging, that's what they want to carry out. And they want and they love an opportunity to take Kanye, a figure where people are already such a fan, he is a cult following, that they want to defend everything they, uh, that he, he says and does. They want to believe that there's some good faith basis to it. So now they do that to anything he says. So now if he's spewing anti-Semitism, all these people are adopting and trying to find a way to rationalize and take these views and you endanger real people. He's a really destructive ass bastard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well yeah, said. That's what I gotta say. I think that people, part of it is cognitive dissonance. Like they don't want to accept that he is the way he is. And oftentimes I think that people ascribe rationality to these figures that doesn't exist. Like where it's, oh no, he's playing two-dimensional chess or three-dimensional chess, yada, yada, yada. And they can't just accept that no, he he believes what he's saying. That there there's no like coded message there. He's out and proud as a Nazi, saying he loves Hitler. Like sometimes you just got to take people at their face, at, at, like at their word, what they say at face value. And exactly. this is one of those instances where I, I think it's appropriate to do that. Yeah. You, you know yeah. how people believe conspiracy theories because it makes them feel safer about the real world. Like I don't want to think about the twin towers actually having planes flying into them, so I'm going to believe that it may be the Jews or uh, George Bush or this other kind of thing. And I, I feel safer knowing that we have control that way. Part of me today when I was watching that Alex Jones thing was that like I would really love if this was a conspiracy theory where Ye was playing all of them because this looks so bad on Tim Pool the other day where he had that really fucked up moment, and this looks really bad on fucking Alex Jones show where he's having to dial it back. Alex Jones is the one being like, well, we can't praise the Nazis. We can go pretty far in what we say and do, but praising the Nazis is kind of like the line, right? There's there's at least a bar. So I, I know it's not real, but I, I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you make Alex Jones look reasonable, that's right. when you're done. You, you, you've you You've lost it. That's it. But, That's when cancel culture should actually affect you. Fuck but, this but, whole, oh, cancel culture bad. No, if ever there was a case for cancellation, I think Kanye has met that criteria. And that's the that's the crazy unfortunate thing about Kanye. The only thing that's really sad about the Kanye situation is just to see a black man allow himself to be turned into a puppeteer in this way because Listen, that is a thing, just in general. Black people enter the room and they try and create the contrast between you of like, you were the wild, irrational, this, 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 and next, and whatever. So Alex Jones and them are always going to set themselves up to you know, to make... Oh, yeah, look at this extra crazy, like, you know, here's the crazy, like, oh, get your hair from Kanye, and then everyone who likes him, it's their job to try to parse out and weed Mac, like, you know, there's some genius to it, but that was, that's always the setup, like, that's, that's the thing, no matter what he does, Kanye, even in his, his good days, right, let's think about it, even a call back to the George Bush days, it's never gone good for Kanye when he enters these kinds of rooms in terms of how he is presented, whether or not he was saying something on this side of the aisle or the other aisle, they would always create that, that dichotomy between it, so it's just sad to see him allow it to be used and weaponized in this way and he's a part of it like he's in he's in on it at this point like all right yeah like let's 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 do this and then we gonna sit here because let's be let's make no mistake alex jones is not above and better than any of that rhetoric <laughs> like like that not, mm -hmm. not at all no. not at all his, no. his, yeah. what i God most know him for doing is is quite literally just as up there is right there oh yeah 100 
so I, I have direct I have, I, have, I have direct examples of this. The other day, if anyone doesn't listen to Knowledge Fights, they are an awesome podcast that breaks down every single lie that Alex Jones has in every single episode of every single thing that he does. And he had an episode uh, a couple weeks ago where he was straight up saying that like uh, there's a 10 to 1 ratio of black people killing white people in America. And then after he was talking about how gay people eat feces and shit like that, like this. And then he brought on a dude. His guest star was a fucking guy who was trying to tell us it's totally normal to talk about Christian nationalism. Why don't we say that we are proud Christian nationalists? And he was like, I, that makes sense to me. This is like he gets so much cover as a white supremacist because of the fact that he's a meme, because of the gay frogs, because of all that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. So people don't think of Alex Jones like, oh, yeah, he's a white supremacist. But the dude, like the writing's on the wall. He, he says all this stuff all the time. We just see the memes and we think he's fucking hilarious, you know? I see him purely as a white supremacist. I see him. I'm, I'm, I'm on black Twitter. I don't I don't get no. I never seen an Alex Jones memes in my life. I know him purely, <laughs> purely. <laughs> purely <laughs> back, I, I, I literally exclusively Alex Jones batching crazy white supremacists. That's, that's all I know. I'm like, Ooh, scary. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Did you all see the Kim.com response? Where oh, he was basically yeah. mad that the mask slipped because like yeah. you're not supposed to directly say this. Like they like to speak in dog whistles and coded language. And you don't say Jewish people, you say globalists. So like he basically said, Well, I agreed with everything you said, Kanye West, but by uh, praising Hitler, and I'm paraphrasing, by the way, you're giving them what they want. And so uh, there was another uh, a right wing politician who lost that responded. I'm, I'm blanking on her name, too, where she basically said the same thing, where it's like, see, I'm not with you on the Hitler stuff. So just keep spouting the anti-Semitism, but never say that much. Never this say the quiet part loud. This, this is quite kind of like I dropped a, an essay today on my sub stack Illuminati, and I this is kind of exactly what I was talking about. America will let you condemn in parts. It will let you talk about something in part, or you know what I mean, or like let you imply that something is similar, but it'll never admit it for what it completely is in totality. So because it it would be forced, they wouldn't have the moral room to condemn it. So at the end of the day, it's like we're gonna we're gonna total on. We're gonna be right here at anti-Semitism Street at the top of the street at the top of the street. But whoa, 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 whoa. If you say Hitler, if you if we do Hitler, there's no there's no wiggle room in that. We gotta wear it as what it real truly is. So they wanna go just one hair of you know one just one hair shy, and then then it's just rhetoric. Yeah, they yep. always need like yeah. a little bit exactly. of, of plausible deniability, just like a, the tiniest bit. Just as long as there's like one dumbass in the world that thinks that they're not what they actually are, then they can keep yeah. skating by on that idea that they actually aren't that obvious thing. So that once you actually call it out, once once Kanye actually says uh, that he's a Nazi and that he loves Hitler. That that's it. Like there's there's no more pretending. You can't even pretend to pretend anymore because now it's just exactly. out in the open. It's obvious. Did he? Did he yeah. say that? I didn't finish the broadcast. Did he actually say like I'm I'm a Nazi? Yes. Yep. In in the broadcast. Yes. Yep. Oh my God. I know you fucking wow. lying. I'm so that fucking. I'm so. Oh, I'm so disappointed in he myself. He put his hand up. Like no Alex patience. Jones is like, I don't like like uh he does he doesn't like hearing about Nazis. I'm not a Nazi. And then then Kanye West goes, I am. I am. Oh and Alex God. Jones goes, you're what? I'm a Nazi. <laughs> he, he straight up, I covered in my video. He straight up says it. It's completely yep. insane. Yeah. Oh my I'm God. so upset with myself. Y'all don't understand. I got so fucking giddy with glee at the, at, at the, <laughs> when he, just at the, I like Hitler shit. I was like, oh, this son of a bitch. I got him out. <laughs> I'm so sad that he sent all the smoking gun. Oh fuck! Yeah, I bury the lead. <laughs> why? Why does it take that for some people? Like, obviously, not not for Ye, but just like people in general. There's other people. Like a good example was Alex Jones, who were like, they're broadcasting this shit. Like, you know, a lot of the right in America is straight up like, we don't want trans people to exist. It's like they're telling you who they are, and a lot of people still. And I, maybe I blame liberal media for this. They'll still just be like, well, uh, how can we truly know what they think? Uh, what do they desire? Like, you know, is, is there any way of truly? Like, it's like no, they're they're broadcasting this shit. They're trying to they're trying to pass it through legislation they're trying to limit the uh, autonomy of women that's like they're doing the things uh, right now that they're like you should see them for what they are kind of stuff you know they're okay, banning the books yeah, it's all there sorry go ahead Blair no 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 I, I was gonna or I don't know who was Kanye, but um anyone who's really shocked by this Kanye behavior it has really just not been in the loop about what Kanye has been about I mean I don't know if y'all know this but back in 2011 
he compared himself to Hitler then. Like he was already laying these cards out on the table. This is not new information. So it's kind of just anyone who's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. You're just like, mm, I mean, not really. You could. You have to understand that at the time he was disorganized crazy, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like he was still very like the consistent, you didn't like the thing that makes it's un, it's undisputable that Kanye is is mentally unwell, right? And he's going through things. Kanye has mental health issues. Like Kanye is not, you know, a, f- a fully a fully together person in terms of these things that he's doing. But it's the organized fashion and that that lets mm-hmm. you know, like, no, 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 these are conscious choices. This is not this is not a mental health episode. He knows what he's doing because he knows where he's going. He knows who he's doing it with. He knows when he picks up when he drops certain angles, when storylines. He knows when to you know go about it. So that's all you know. But at the time. Hey, back then, we were still, we were, black. I, you have to understand, the reason, you know, black people love Kanye, right? Like, we're not just gonna, as a community, I don't mean, we, when I say we're as a community, not me, because I fuck Kanye, right? Like, but as everybody, not gonna just let go of Kanye, like, we're, we're, we're deep in the, he ain't been right since his mama died excuse. 2011? We de- that's the beginning of he ain't been right, his mama just died. No, I'm, we was in the, people weren't trying to head out then. Like, we want you to understand, we, there are black people still riding, riding for Kanye. Even the ones, even, even, even the ones who, who are against Kanye in terms of what he's saying, you know, let him go chill out for go six months and put out some music. They, you know, we gonna go right back to the, you know, he ain't right. So no, they wasn't trying to head out in 2011. I assure you, I'm so sorry, Blair. They was not listening to that shit. He might have still been with black women in 2011. Nah, we we wasn't trying to head out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just think more from like, there's a lot. Of, like when I covered Kanye West about a month ago in an episode, I thought this was it. I didn't think it could get much worse, which is why I'm like, oh, here we are a month later, and I'm like, oh shit. But a lot of white folks, myself included, um are not super keen to a lot of that information. And sometimes it's also in a weird way, hard to translate it to be like, Hey, by the way, lots of folks already know about this. It's just not like our community that already is aware of it. And sometimes I think that falls on us because we either don't know how to be aware or just don't care until something goes absolutely through the roof like this. But there was a lot of people who didn't know that that was even said all the way back in 2011. And people thought the most controversial thing that he did in past tense was the whole um, slavery was a choice thing in like 2017 or 18. I was like, no, no, no. It goes much farther than that. That's that's when it definitely got on like, you know, uh, white liberal radars. That's that's when it was like, whoa, that's that's really Mm -hmm. intense. And then like even at that time, not everyone knew that behind the scenes, he apparently was praising Hitler in that like that TMZ interview. That was just something that never like, you know, made it out. But like that was the first time I think, you know, a lot of white liberals were like, oh, okay, so so he has some pretty yikesy takes on this shit. I think I think the problem Mm -hmm. is people don't have an actual understanding of white supremacy as a whole. I think and I think I think on both sides of the aisle, like because a lot of conversations I've had with my with my black friends who are prepared to ride or die for Kanye and they don't understand. Or even when I talked about it on Rising, you know, Robbie laughed at that. Like when I'm like, oh, he's he is spewing. This is, you know, textbook white nationalism because it seems ridiculous because he's a black guy and he's saying these things about Jews and, and you know, Chris Rock had a joke about this once, like black people, we don't dissect white people. It's just like, it's all white people does, you know, don't get involved to some, to, you know, and I think people don't seem to realize like actually white, white supremacists don't just hate black people. Gay people right there at the top of the list. Jewish people are right there. Like those are the. That's the staple, like that's right there. Like this is <laughs> the textbook. go-to. Like, yeah, like Chris Rock <laughs> has a joke about that. Like, oh, once people start, you know, once once people start getting real, real, real racist, he starts listening. He's like, oh, you know, black people and Jews are next. That's a whole thing. It's a it's a thing. So yes, yeah, like, once he started spewing as a black person, when he started spewing um anti-black rhetoric and he started ingratiating himself with known white nationalists. To me, goes without saying, the next thing we know anti-Semitism is coming because that is a that is when they teach it to you in school, like, hey, what do white nationalists believe? What did the Klan believe? Who did they hate? Who did the Nazis hate? That is on the, it's a bullet point. It's like one of the things you would learn for the test. That is a part of it. And I think that's the mistake is people don't really realize that. So they don't really understand what you're talking about. That's why they laugh at it. Like they don't know what they don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Online, there's a lot of overlap with misogyny as well. Like, there's like you can see this intersection between a lot of the like men's rights, MGTOW, red pill communities, the Andrew Tates, all that kind of like, oh God, here we go, you know, you got to be a big fucking top G, all that shit crossing over with like actual alt right neo Nazi shit too, where it's just like uh, a lot of disrespect towards women. Misogyny overlaps with this, and these communities can find you know similar beliefs and stuff in the same circles, which also really fucking sucks because it's also so popular. Like the thing that I hate is that like the Andrew Andrew Tate's, uh, and before he was like, you know, banned off social media, all these motherfuckers get so promoted by algorithms on, on YouTube mm -hmm. and, and another shit because this stuff sells. It keeps eyeballs on it. People want to watch controversial shit, edgy shit. And if you got a guy going on there or so like, you know, it's like, uh, yay is being racist. Uh, uh, what, what? One of the most powerful black men is being racist? Crazy. It's like, oh, Andrew Tate is saying that like women deserve their own rape. You're like, oh, whoa, I'm going to watch this. This is wild. And this stuff just gets fucking fueled and funneled. And uh, unfortunately, it all overlaps. Well, here's what sucks. Um, if Kanye West was a woman, he would have already been put into a conservatorship for these antics. But because he's a man, we say that he's just a misguided genius. And I think that's a bit fucked. I've never heard that take before. I mean... I have heard that there there would be a, there would be a certain difference for sure. I'm not going to push back on that at all. No, it, de it definitely yeah. has already been done. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would have already been very done. True. I, I, <laughs> very I did, true. Very true. I did. I did. I did see though that they are some. There's something in the works of some sort. Whether it mm. happens or not, I don't know. But it definitely would have already been done. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially with like that powerful family. Like think of the Kardashians. Think of the overlaps between those different groups and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. like compare him to Britney Spears. There's no comparison, right? Like he's way True. more out there than she was when she was in her. Cons oh, I, 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 I would say comparing mm -hmm. him to Britney Spears is very mean to Britney. There's no. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not even close. <laughs> yeah. Britney Spears is on Instagram just posting the topless photos or whatever, and which yeah. she's not deserved to be compared to. No. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think the thing with with Britney more than just like you know, because there's some, there's some intersectionality of a few things, right? Because you know, white 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 woman, different thing. Like you, know, there, we, we mm. there's there's so much to unpack there, right? White woman, black man, <laughs> yeah, all these is, different things. This is a you huge know, camp. yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a lot. I, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I'd have to write a paper. I, I see a few different things to explore. <laughs> um, you know, I think. Something in particular that distinguishes the cases is that Britney's own family is who was working against her. Like it's you know it's the state. A conservatorship is a method by which the state you know was able to take control of you or whatever and give it to somebody. But they worked in conjunction with his Britney's own family that set Britney up that that went against Britney. You know that's that. So Kanye does Kanye has a different um, situation there that I think uh, changes it. Also. I don't, yeah. you know, in some ways, one could argue there are times in Kanye's career in life that I could say Kanye, Kanye being a, a black man has obviously led to more vilification. Like, I think in a different world, in a different world, if Kanye were a white man, I don't think he would have ever had, like, people would have ever hated him the way they hated him in the first place, that, that his foundation was so much hate when all of this happened. So in ways, I do think I want to make sure I give him his bail, because I, I was very much so, I, I love me some Kanye. I was a Kanye defender back in my early day. I was never mad. He did that oh, to Taylor Swift. I was definitely like, uh -huh. Fuck George Bush. I was feeling. I I, I felt him. Okay, on uh, in the earliest of early 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 days. Um, but now I think what is helping Kanye a lot is first of all who he's adjacent to. You always because I can't in the same breath. I can say that him being that if you you know if he were a woman because it's definitely that he's a white woman and a different thing to that that this would be it would be a different outcome because in some respects it's probably it's his adjacent. It's him being adjacent to white women that's actually protecting him now. Like it's it's Kim and all of these white women Power and all these white very powerful white women too. Bing, 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 bing. And most powerful white women in America. Bing, 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 bing. And in so in yeah. so many respects, you know, I yeah. So, so I I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know. But it's a hot take. It's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting one too, though. I don't know. The 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 entire saga has just been an absolute fucking. It sucks because, again, all all we've been doing is talking about, like, you know, a lot of the things related to the memes and all that kind of shit. But part of me always just, like, I can't get the image of a smiling Nick Fuentes and a smiling Alex Jones. Slightly nervous. Mm -hmm. I don't ever see Alex Jones ever fucking nervous on his show, but slightly nervous that, oh, we're going too far. But Nick Fuentes, not nervous at all. So happy. Huge mm -hmm. grin. 
this this little fucking 24 year old again come hunter is so excited about what's happening because it's just like th- this is the greatest opportunity of my life i i i never would be in the top trending of twitter he was fucking top 10 for a little while had it not been for this shit you know uh, that's that's like one of the saddest things about this entire story. When, once everything is brushed aside and everyone is just like, oh, well, this is a train wreck, no question. It's like, but you know who won? Because we all lost. Everyone loses. There's there's no benefits here, you know, be, between like, uh, you know, people uh, who are opposed to anti-Semitism, people who are opposed to neo-Nazis, people who are opposed to white supremacy, all that kind of stuff. The winner is the fucking neo-Nazi. And now he has a way bigger platform to do his shit from. Yeah, definitely. I think we killed that topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I don't know what else to say. But I mean, we could go on, I'm sure. But I feel like, damn, this is, this is so, grim. So just, this, this timeline is grim. Okay, okay so yeah. why don't we talk about happier things? Why don't, why don't we talk about the dude who traces, uh, trades horses for uh, sexual favors uh, and his empire collapsing <laughs> what? in real who? time? Who is that Donald Trump? Oh, oh, so th- this is a guy who bought a, a $44 billion midlife crisis. Uh, it's basically like a, a sports car or like a, a much, much younger uh, concubine, uh, except that uh, we are seen from the POV of uh, the sports car. That's the experience that we're all having on, on the internet. You still haven't picked it up? Did you don't, <laughs> I can't believe. No, you're fucking with me, right? Uh, Elon Musk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, horse? Oh, the horse thing. That's right. The horse, the like, horse just thing. threw everything off land. Yeah, the horse just threw. That's like, that's like the, that's an old story now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should not let him leave that though. He's a monkey torturer. He's, he's he has equinomics. oh the monkey torture. Yeah, believes in trading horses for goods and services. Come on. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. Who, uh, I'm sorry. Where do we start with Elon Musk? I don't even know. <laughs> like, oh Lord, Elon. Yeah. Oh, now I'm upset again. What what about him? <laughs> I feel like I'm, he exists. That's the problem. Immediately, I want all the smoke. <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, he at least proved that uh, billionaires aren't very smart. They didn't get that money because they're smart. Just they won the lucky sperm club. And it's, yeah, it's just about luck. Uh, I I think that he disproved the notion of a meritocracy fully. Uh, Everyone can acknowledge now that, you know, being talented isn't necessarily going to translate to success. So I am thankful uh, with regard to that. I do like the way that he is going after brands and at the same time, uh, he's kind of crushing his own brand. There was a Financial Times article, uh, no cap, that said that he was calling up executives when they pulled ads from Twitter and personally berating them. That, to me, is wonderful. <laughs> like, it shows you how petulant he is. Like, whenever I think, like, am I being too petty on Twitter? It's like, no, no, I'm never Elon Musk level uh, petty. So it just, you know, you can look to people like Elon Musk, and even if he may have a lot of money, that doesn't mean that he's intelligent. Uh, that doesn't directly translate into like being a good person or more valuable. He's just a dumbass, um, and that's what wait, wait, wait. the Elon Chronicles has uh, proven to me. What what I'm hearing from you, Mike, is that you're not lining up to get your Neuralink chip implanted in your head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, if nothing really changes in politics, maybe I'll do that. Uh, get the Neuralink chip. Uh, chip in minecraft i'll do that to myself if nothing changes if the doomerism continues but right now i'm not there yet yeah i mean you don't trust uh, tesla's his his work on tesla to uh make a solid chip that's not going <laughs> to fall apart in your head <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I need a little bit more um tests although i did see that he was gonna get the chip himself i don't know how true that is. i mean he probably won't but apparently he wants to do it or something like that uh yeah i would encourage him to do that that'd be great well, Put it in, uh, you know, you know how also it, you know how you can tell when someone has a Neuralink chip in their head? <laughs> their face will suddenly burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> They'll start running into children and, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> World War Z style. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was also curious. Um, I don't want to change the subject if you all want to stay on Elon Musk. No, but no, no, no. All... There's, there's no so rules. Did... That, this whole thing okay. is just saying we're figuring it out all. as we go along, okay? <laughs> so I yeah. discovered something that I'm, for some reason, fascinated with. Uh, Spider-Man is real. There is a pro-life Spider-Man. And I saw he was on Tucker Carlson, and he scales buildings to get out the message that abortion bad. Um, and... 
it's something I, I don't even know where to begin with the story. I talked about it on my Twitch stream. And he he was <laughs> he offered Tucker Carlson to go with him climbing. Tucker Carlson unfortunately rejected that. But yeah, he doesn't have any gear. He just he scales buildings and he he's trying to raise money for like this anti-abortion fund. So uh, and he looks like Peter Parker, kind of like um, like a, a Peter loser. Parker type. A fucking loser. You, <laughs> why we to, you see why you, you see why you have to shame people like you like I'm not like like you, bullying is important. No, I, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you said it. <laughs> oh, was that a tip of my tongue? I was like, <laughs> You're trying to say, you just gotta admit it. Yeah, it's it's important sometimes. <laughs> like what the yo, you're a fucking and you know and you know, like you're a loser, bro. Like we have to actually talk. Like I gotta write something about the politics of loserdom. Like you're a fucking loser. That's what these people really are. That whole side of the aisle, like they are the the corniest, wackest, loser, just loud. The Ben Shapiro. Look at these people. What are we? What are, you going? You, 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 you're scaling at your big age with your big self. What are you doing? You're fucking scaling walls. Like to get to get the fucking message. Pro life doesn't need awareness. Like what do you think? You think people don't know? What, 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 what are you saying? That's to true to raise awareness. <laughs> Just so people know about this cause they've never heard of before. <laughs> Whoa, it's Spider Man. Whoa, that reminds me. Birth. <laughs> about how they was treated in school because they like anime liars y'all are fucking losers it wasn't the anime it was you it was you doing shit like this like you know just, what are you talking about how you even combine those notions and you know he thought that shit was hot shit you know he was announcing somebody like mommy mommy wait 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 wait, wait, wait. I guess I'm, like, I'm about to fuck him up with this one and he's like what am i doing spider-man take it take it take it abortion abortion like what a loser. <laughs> well, and and the meme is already pre-planned, right? Like, there's gonna be a meme. It's claims to be pro-life, dies, falls off of a building. Like, I just that kept <laughs> that kept running through my head. Wow. Fucking Peter Parker, like claims to be pro-life. Yeah, like he he has the Spider-Man logo on his back, and so you can Google it. And yeah, he's he said on he's his scared. back, like tattooed. Uh, it's like he was wearing a shirt. A shirt, and he's scaling. Yeah, the wall. and he was he was and he was high up. Like if he were to fall, that's it. So it's not a very pro life thing to do, and, and, but he's doing it. <laughs> and you know what's crazy about that? Let me tell you. Yeah, you know you're a fucking loser. I hate to say it. Let me and let me. I, you know, and this is no slime. This is no slime to the Spider Man. Spider Man does not deserve the strays he's about to get. I just want to let the record reflect. I have the most respect for Spider Man. Nobody <laughs> sent me any messages. I'm not disrespecting Spider Man. But he wasn't the most popular man, was he? Like I'm like. He, he, True. Like, we went fucking go crazy for Spider Man. Spider Man himself. So think about the kind of person. <laughs> That watches Spider Man. Like, Spider Man is where he emulates to be level cool. Spider Man is a man who's literally super and still cannot be just regular school popular. Like, nobody <laughs> fucks with Spider Man. Spider Man has about two friends and one bitch. Like, that's, that's it. That's it. That's all he got. And this man was watching that, like, oh, if I could be like this boy one day. <laughs> He's relatable. That's why it's relatable. <laughs> It's the yeah, coolest part it, of the movie where it, he it. catches lunch. I, <laughs> like, that's two friends is the goal for a lot of us. <laughs> he catches a bunch of lunch. And you're like, whoa, he really showed them. He caught the lunch. <laughs> but I love how this is going to totally lead to an anti-SJW Avengers where like Turf, Tor Th Turf Thor is next because you know this dude is going to make the rounds. He was already on Tucker Carlson. He's going to go on, uh, you know, Tim Pools. So there's going to be like other variations of like the superhero where there's like like a um, like I don't know, some anti-Semite Thanos. Like they're all gonna form anti together. Anti-Semite yeah. Thanos. <laughs> like you know, just it's gonna it's gonna happen. I'm tempted it's, to YouTube it. Like I want to see it, but I also don't want to fuck my algorithm up. Like you know what I mean? Like one, we're like, yeah, no. like yeah, like. Mm -mm, is he I'm successful, like... Mike? Like is he actually raising money? Like is his goal? Is he successful in um, whatever he's doing? I don't know if he is successful. Um. It seems like he recently just got on the radar because there were a couple of articles written about him. Okay. And so then Tucker picked it up. Um, I have a video coming out on my channel on Saturday. It's just like a Twitch clip where if you don't want the, the bad stuff to get on your algorithm, you could watch mine. And I just run through the interview and it's just, yeah, it's, it's, 
kind of what you'd expect when you think of like a Republican Spider-Man. And I, I don't know. I just Republican Spider-Man is powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you, you, like, something I never thought. Of. Like, just like it's just so ridiculous. Like, this side of the aisle is just so fucking ridiculous, son. And like, mm-hmm. they, like, and they always and I hate being in a world where I'm supposed to take these people seriously. Like, I'm the problem because I'm not. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and. You know what I'm saying? And those would be the, the kind of people that will curse me out in the comments for not thinking that this is some serious shit. Like Republican Spider-Man are the kind of people who would tell me my nails and my hair are distracting them from the serious thing. <laughs> really? Oh, like, these are these your people? Like, these are the kind of people you, like, Rep- Republican Spider-Man? Sir, you are a real boy. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is a fiction. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Like, I don't want to hear anything from you. I can't respect nothing from the minds of anybody who even is having a serious conversation with him. Tucker Carlson's so goddamn stupid. <laughs> he mm-hmm. like, Tucker Carlson not even going to go to regular hell. Like, he going to go to a place special for stupid people. Just stupid ass people. <laughs> people whose major sin was running amok with stupidity all across the universe. <laughs> so I can say, you know what? I, I, I got something special for you to say. <laughs> By your fucking self. Because clearly, you can't have company in hell. You don't know how to act. He could be around hell talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I just like, I do feel like I don't know. Go ahead, go I decided ahead. to look into him because I wanted to see what he's actually supporting because he's got these click here to donate buttons on his website, which is really mm. his website's so well put together if you check it out, by the way. Um, so I wanted to see who he's donating to. And he's donating to a recent charity that was essentially established in 2019 called Let Them Live. And they don't show up on Charity Navigator. And usually when a charity doesn't show up, it's because they can't hit a million dollars worth of donations in a year. So Whatever um, money is being donated indicates to me that it's not significant. And these are more of just um, publicity stunts more than anything. Mm, Over okay. pro-life Spider-Man? So yeah. do, do you think he's profiting off it? Um, I don't know. So the thing with donations, like I can't say for certain, obviously, but you can say that you're donating. And as long as you don't actually say what percent of it, you're technically not being deceptive if you only donate 10% and pocket 90 that's technically okay, even though it's really wow. gray. Was there any any disagreement among? Was it not assumed that 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 um Republican Spider Man was <laughs> was not? <laughs> I still can't hear that so loud. Republican Spider Man. We thought we thought Republican Republican Spider Man was was the Spider Man Foundation <laughs> has raised ten thousand nine hundred fifty three dollars of the fifty thousand dollars that they want to raise. That's and this all- is after being on Tucker Carlson's show. Yes, that's all. <laughs> oh that's wow! After Tucker Carlson. He got the Tucker Carlson bump, and that's all he could do. That is sad. All right, I'm sorry. Oli Emily was totally on point with this. That is so sad. That that is absolutely ridiculous. No, you are a clown man. You're not Spider Man. You're a clown man. That that's all you're gonna be from now on. He's it sounds like he's doing to get on camera. Peter Parker. Yeah, he's what you get when you order Peter Parker from Wish.com. That's the Spider-Man that arrives. <laughs> <laughs> Google him and you'll see. Like, if you Google his face, his name is Mason Des Champs, by the way. Now. Okay, spell it um, now. Mason. Yeah, Mason. Uh, I think it's uh, oh, no. M-A-I-S-O-N. We're promoting him. Broadcasting him. D-E-S. Uh, this is going to be as famous as he gets. We're giving him his 15. Okay. Uh, more yeah. than Tucker, probably. Uh, Des, D-E-S, and then just Champs. And then his face, that's the guy who's first calling all, you a cuck. First of all, <laughs> I know you fucking lying. I know, I know you fucking lying. First and foremost, first and foremost, actually, let me run it back because I thought I needed to preface to make sure I wasn't disrespecting Spider-Man. But whoever it was that started, I can't remember which one of you it was who was like, oh, you know, he looks a little Peter Parker-ish. Y'all owe Peter Parker a motherfucking apology. <laughs> <laughs> like, get it me! Ah! He does not, no, this guy, he looks like there's something a little bit off. Something like a little Doug. bit wrong with him. He looks like abstract Doug. He looks like abstract <laughs> Doug. That's what the he fuck looks, he looks like. Peter fucking Parker? He looks like that. <laughs> Peter is rolling over in his bed right now. I can't believe you said that shit. And you got him. That Peter Parker? Oh, Peter Parker? <laughs> <laughs> he looks a little bit. 
he, he looks a little bit like if uh, Picasso was in charge of a Spider-Man comic. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> and was drunk. <laughs> I mean, I, I do think that the obvious end here is, um, I mean, uh, pro-choice Green Goblin will show up and this guy's going to fall off a bed. <laughs> Wait, can one of us do that? Bro, choice Green Goblin and Republican (laughs) Spider-Man. Yes, one of us has to be... Yeah, one of us has to step up. I don't understand. I don't really understand. Yes, that's true. This is a calling. I'm I'm looking at one of the videos. Like the banners. I, so I personally am perplexed as to the messaging, right? Let's like, I guess since now I'm forced to have to engage, this is a real thing. It's, I'm, in too deep, I'm, in too, I'm in too deep now, right? No, so there's, can, there's, there's a away. video and the man is, the man is hanging, hanging from the window like a Whitney soon, like, like a Jimmy <laughs> Sweep. <laughs> but anyway, and you know, I assume he's not, he's not talking. Then there's no audio, you know what I mean? He's from a, he's from a fucking on the side of a building. And the caption says, the fight is still raging. Conservative media, for whatever re- <laughs> conservative media, for whatever reason, has yet to pick up on this story. I want to meet my goals. If you want to hear me share this video, what the fuck is the goal? What is he talking about? He's like, just like abortion, hashtag abortion, hashtag let's go Brandon, <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> He's dropping Brandon. Is he doing this while he's climbing? Is like Republican Spider-Man mid-climb while he's like Bro. putting this on the socials? <laughs> Got a gram. Like, what is? What are you trying to bring awareness to? What's your goals? Nobody, you. This isn't like his personal fight. He don't got no bitches. I know this. No one's pregnant for him. Like, like, like this is not. This, this is not his okay. lived Could experience. You, you imagine trying to describe that? I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I gotta take the day off. I'm ascending. It's like you're you're. Do we that shit again? You're gonna be fucking This again. man right here is having trouble getting the women. Why? <laughs> oh, I Everyone can't. laughs at you. Does I can't with that like picture. Does it seem like somebody who the top of their problems list should be is about whether or not women women is having his babies? <laughs> yeah, it's it's it definitely seems a lot less like a Republican Spider Man and a lot more like a diary of a wimpy Republican. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he do look like that automation. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I feel like I'm bullying a middle school kid right now, but it's also warranted. Like he probably hasn't been bullied or like <laughs> told by his parents <laughs> to stop. So maybe we're like that parental figure in a way. That's this is how I'm rationalizing just being a dick to someone. But I, I kind of feel like it's deserved. It's just so it's so bizarre. It, it's it's weird because like the the amount of effort and dedication it takes to be able to scale a building like that, like that's that takes work, right? Like so he. He dedicated himself to be able to to free climb, and he's this fucking stupid. Like it's it's just it's so <laughs> it's just so bizarre to me. Like if you're if you have that in you to be able to do something that is so impressive, scale a building that's impressive, but then you're you're also a hateful piece of shit and you're a moron. You can't you can't get laid and you scale buildings. Like that's that's some fucked up shit. Like if yeah. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Hey, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. They, they, <laughs> I already almost cried, and I haven't even seen they it. Arrest, they arrested him. <laughs> <laughs> this was too much. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> your laughter is making me laugh now, and I'm almost crying. Imagine you calling your mommy from jail. Like, <laughs> I, I, wait, what? I don't think can't even hear what you're saying. Imagine you call your mommy from jail. Like, mommy, mommy, please come down. Yeah. Mommy, it was climbing the building. <laughs> he was arrested for climbing. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. It's my calling. I, I, I had to do it. The walls like Spider Man. <laughs> I'm Spider Man. <laughs> that means that you you literally got locked up for doing fuck. They don't even know what the crime is. <laughs> I don't know if it's like it has to be against the law. This is some bullshit. Lock him up. Like, get him, get him the fuck in the back. <laughs> I can imagine his mom was just like, "Oh, what what were you arrested for, sweetie?" And she's like, "Oh, please be drugs or something." And he's like, "Oh, climbing a building." She's like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> <Not again. laughs> 
Wait, this, <laughs> this, this kid, this this kid no, definitely, no. Was <laughs> definitely not be Republicans. He can't be Spider-Man, period. Apparently his parents are alive. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, so embarrassed. Uh, is saying Republican Spider-Man is what happens when you dump intelligence for strength. <laughs> 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 you can probably chart it in a graph. <laughs> he is agile, I suppose. I suppose I can't take that from him. <laughs> yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, child. That's 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 hilarious. God. Oh, I can't handle it. I'm I'm like, I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm Republican Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make fun of uh, like movies and shit. Uh, can we also make fun of Super Mario? Did Did any of you see Super Mario? Oh my the god! Trailer? There's a movie. I saw There's the a trailer. movie. I gotta mm-hmm. say, it's looking. Hey, it's looking I think so it looks good. good. Except for except for the main actor's voice, and also I gotta mm. say, I'm not feeling. Yes. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling Luigi's voice either. I'm sorry. Everyone else oh. sounds great. Everyone else sounds good. great. Okay, this thing that came out two days ago, that's what this is? Okay, okay so if y'all don't know, I'll, I'll give a really quick recap. Uh, Chris Pratt was hired to be Mario. Everyone made fun of him, and they were like, yeah, uh, Chris Pratt can't do Mario because he doesn't act. He's just Chris Pratt as Chris Pratt and everything. It's Chris Pratt, except he's a guy who works with dinosaurs. It's Chris Pratt, uh, Chris Pratt, except he's a spaceman, stuff like that. So he released this Instagram where he's like, it's me, Mario. But it won't be like that. It'll it'll actually be the same place. <laughs> and then everyone's like, well, Chris Pratt's going to fuck this up. He can't be Mario. This sucks. The trailer comes out, and obviously it's just Chris Pratt, except now he's doing a weird half Chris Pratt, half Brooklyn accent, where he's like, whoa, Luigi, get over here, you know, shit like that. Like, like, what mushroom is that? kingdom, right here we come. come. Like, that's, that's, that's the accent. <laughs> that, 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 that didn't sound so bad. If he sounded like that throughout the whole movie, maybe I would like it a little bit more, but it seems like he somehow only sounds good doing that one line. <laughs> but did well, any of you watch the French or Portuguese? I was just gonna stuff? say that because yes, they got word. good voice actors for those. Yeah, yeah, that's Mario. You know, it's like ha ha, mm-hmm. and you're like, whoa, out of nowhere. Okay, okay I wonder so though, like French ninety stuff. minutes of hearing ha ha, woo, 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 like wouldn't that get annoying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, that's like true. Chris that's Pratt's voice does. isn't isn't great, but I don't think it's like it, it's not gonna get in the way. Like it's it's fine. It's it's serviceable. Um, I think Jack Black as Bowser is going to carry that movie. Oh, no, uh, no, no, he mm-hmm. crushes it. I, like, in fact, I think it's hilarious mm-hmm. that Jack Black did so well, considering how bad Chris Pratt has done. Because it juxtaposes. <laughs> like, Jack Black has a passion for the shit. He's like, I love this franchise. I love, I'm going to be Bowser. I'm, I'm going to give this for my children. I am Bowser. And it's like, whoa. And you're like, whoa, okay. All right, Jack Black, you crushed it. No question. It, it's, I mean, yeah. it, it's tough. Like, there's... Because if you have the Mario voice, like that that high pitched Mario voice for ninety minutes in a speaking role in a movie, I don't think that lands. Like that's got to be annoying. Um, so there ha- it has to be toned down a little bit. Um, I'm sure there's a there's a better version out there in the world than Chris Pratt's, but it's not so. Like I think my feeling is the writing is going to carry the movie. It's going to be good enough. It's it's going to be I think a a fairly good an- animated film. Um, it's not going to, I think, blow people away, but I think it'll be good enough. I'm excited for it. I mean, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I'll watch it. Yeah, for sure. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to Chris Pratt's Mario scale the Mushroom Kingdom castle uh, in order to raise money for pro life causes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we call a throwback. <laughs> Republican Mario, baby. <laughs> Republican. I mean, to be fair, Mario probably would be Republican. <laughs> Mario was supposed to be played by like an Italian American. No, they didn't. They didn't feel no kind of way about that. Isn't. Mario ain't there. Uh, Matt Binder, are, you, are you Italian? Do we have an Italian on the on the panel? I I, I am Italian. I'm, I, you're you're I, part Jewish, I right? I am both Italian and Jewish, so I am very relevant on this episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> That's true. You are the intersection. We found the intersection. <laughs> so they didn't feel no kind of way, like Mario. No, no, no one had any pushback on 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 those grounds. I don't, I don't, I don't get in white people business generally, so I miss this controversy. <laughs> but, but like, uh, but I, I feel like if it were me, if, if Mario was me, this would be a problem. Like I feel like, I'm like it's not, it's not giving that Chris Pratt. It just feels very random, very. You know, mm-hmm. I want 
I, yeah, it sounds like Chris. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of yeah. anti-Italian racism just passes in this world, doesn't it? Just, just <laughs> loud all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fredophobia. We don't tolerate Fredophobia on the show, by the way. I just hope you know. Oh, oh somebody man. thought that I was Italian. Roller Dragon says, "Isn't Mike Italian? Um, I'm Portuguese." Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, so am I. I. Could see, I could see Portuguese. that. Yeah. Because your la- your last name, I could guess that. I, I could see that. I could I'm half Portuguese, so we're uh, we're we're Portuguese brothers there. You're half Portuguese. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. What? Oh wow. What's the other half? Uh, white. <laughs> I was I was just about to say I was, I was like oh, which of the whites? My grandparents were born here. That's like it, if you go really back, it's like I think English, French, but okay. I had no connection to that. Lots of white stuff over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Blair, I just be staring at your thing because like <laughs> there's no way for me to know how you're reacting, and I'm just like. Let me look at this little eye and see if it give me something. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love that. Like, I, I, I want to know how to do that. Like, have like an animation thinking, like, like, like yeah. follow you like that. Give it advanced technology. I yeah. want a me. I want like a little thing I could be behind. I want a me. But it really is disturbing. Recording. Here, hold on. Let me show you the human version. Oh my god. A oh, little wow. You just changed. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I prefer to be a pyramid. Yeah, <laughs> that's sweet. You'd be a pyramid. It's like a scary. That's like, cool. Yeah, so I like you as I like you as a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's very like fancy. Spawn, it's like Spawncast where they have uh, Nate who doesn't show his face, but he has like a little. Um, it kind of looks like marshmallow. I don't know what it is. It's like a X. Like he has like an avatar, yeah. and it's, it's pretty cool. But people have seen your face before, though, Blair. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My face isn't okay. like, super hidden. I just like, I mean, like today I have makeup and my hair done and stuff, so it wouldn't matter. But I'm just like, mm, most of the time I'm just lazy. My <laughs> makeup's normally makeup. done, but I didn't do it today. I had intended to be cute for this, but then I was busy. Yeah, but you <laughs> look so fabulous. I, I don't think you understand, Miss Thing. I a flattery. am a little dumpster fire, like without makeup. Like, I need it. I'm old. No white okay Blair, my whole Not chat a is saying, was that the face reveal my chat's asking it's like they're like is this the official face reveal is this the first time oh i mean maybe for that like um i guess vtuber probably i think i've used it once before and it freaked out my chat so i've just never used it since <laughs> <laughs> it freaked out my chat the real face is hilarious yeah, i never yeah, thought I about think... that like hiding one's face that'd be lit probably I feel like if I do could not, go back, do you know about I would whole do that. Section of the internet? Really? Yeah. You would do that? That like okay, I so would, this yeah. is a massive thing. Oh yeah, I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but like it's a big thing on the internet to have like VTubers. Like they are like, and mm-hmm. they're in right now. Like VTubers are so popular on YouTube. VTuber. It's like it, like virtual YouTubers. Like that's what Blair is. It's YouTuber. people who don't yeah. actually ever show their real face, but they do like animated avatars that like do motion tracking to do that kind of stuff because you know it, for a variety of reasons, and they're exploding online. Yeah. I can't. The only reason I can't be a part of that is because I need to be able to call people pussy, like respectfully, <laughs> like 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 on Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, because that's you like, lose that power. Like, that's my bag. Yeah, that's my bag. Like, what? You're providing an anonymous account. Fuck you. Like, you wouldn't say shit. Who does I see that? See it? It's like for the sole reason. Like, I'm very like I'm, I'm trying to transition into stop cussing people out, but I'm very like, hey, 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 come come fight me. <laughs> like, actually, like, like, you talking about me? Come, Fake me, <laughs> and I be like, it's lost energy. If you can't see my face, I want you to be clear. Look me in my eye, and please understand that I would fight you. <laughs> like, like, like the person you are on Twitter is because in real life I beat your ass, but I can't. Like, so that's the only reason. I'm like, I can't be anonymous because I need to have all this base. <laughs> Also, probably the the hill rising wouldn't allow just like a an avatar sitting beside Robbie there. Like, that would <laughs> like what would that wild. look like? I'd be lit. I I can only I I can only imagine that I'd be received. <laughs> like, <laughs> like honestly, they might they might prefer like if, like um a thing of me rather than the real me ever having seen me. They might have responded better to that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I could see it. I could see it going over better. <laughs> have they brought you on again or? Uh, I, since we last, I, I think they just actually asked me um, to go on. I'm going to go on on Tuesday to talk about Rikers. Probably oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right my yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. I think my last time I hosted was like September, I believe. Right. Or September, October. Honestly, the way the days in the year, I feel like time hasn't made sense since 2020. 
So mm-hmm. I never know when everything was. So I'm like, yeah. I try to judge things by hairdo. And if I didn't change my hairdo enough recently, I'm like, I don't know when that was. I think it was September. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, what do you we, have? Well, I was going to, I was going to ask, should, should we actually talk about that? Should like, should you, cause we haven't really talked about anything serious. I, I feel for the last little while. Should we, should we get you the plug? I know the... you fucking lying. Kanye just, Kanye, Kanye must have just tweeted. Did y'all see this? Yay 24, love, love everyone. Look at this symbol. <laughs> oh my God. What? <laughs> I know, listen. Hold on. I know you fucking lying. Wow. 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 Oh uh, my I God. also saw earlier that uh, he tweeted <laughs> out, I assume this was Nick Fuentes, but he tweeted out about the Gripers and then linked to Nick Fuentes' Cozy TV on his official account. I'm like, this is Oh, fuck. shit. Yeah, this is so fucked. You are giving neo Nazis so much power. It's unbelievable. And um, one of the things that I was doing on my show not too long ago was like trying to go through the history of when like when white supremacy in America, especially was really, really starting to ramp up. There was this amazing alliance between black communities and Jewish communities where like a lot of people don't know this. But MLK, during that infamous speech that every Republican likes to fuck up and talk about, like, oh, this is what it really meant kind of shit. The opener for that was a rabbi. There was an alliance between both Jewish communities and black communities at that time because they were facing white supremacy. And then it was like they were they were banding together the only people who benefit from jewish people and black people fighting each other is white supremacists that's it that's it on god on on god on yes on god (laughs) first of all and this is my thing this is this whole you know as a general rule and now i want to say this there are obviously the 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 black people who love kanye so much that they are you know embracing foolishness but for the vast majority recognize that this is non, you know, nonsense and also recognize that this is revisionist history, all this stuff they're trying to say between Jewish, Jewish and black people. Every, everybody knows Jewish and black people are cool. Like that's just, this, this is just, give me a break with it. Come on. We all, we, we, we know it. And it's like, even beyond just like historical facts, right? Cause we, we know that there've always been traditionally been an alliance between those communities. Um, but even just pop culture, even on our pop culture, we've, we've referenced that you watch girlfriends, Tony's husband is Jewish. You know what I mean? And they talk about that. Like it's in that it's a, it's a thing. It's a, it's a well-known thing. So um, it's it's just ridiculous to see them trying to trying to switch up now and suggest, you know, that that there isn't this kind of communal alliance between the two. And and unfortunately, the thing that people forget, the whole purpose. I was saying they think these aren't on face value. They they don't think they're harmful tropes. They're like, oh, this whole you know Jewish people run the world thing. I'm like, it's. I'm like, bro, listen to me. You don't think. As like you take a traditionally mar- oppressed group and an oppressed group of people who have literally been the victims of a genocide, persecuted people, X, Y, Z, and then the groups that want to persecute them are the ones now trying to say, trying to create a division between these two different groups and saying, oh yeah, actually your group has nothing. Like it's not, it's, these, these tropes are intentionally done that way. To say, oh, black mm-hmm. people have nothing. And then trying to say, oh, the Jews have everything. They actually can control it, everything. And trying to direct ire over there all the while you're leaving the white supremacists to busy themselves with all the white supremacist shit they want to do in between the two. It's just like, oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I researched it actually. Uh, the the CEOs of the majority of a lot of the largest banks and uh, Wall Street firms happen to be Irish. And then I went down this rabbit hole. Actually, it turns out the last two Democratic presidents have also been Irish or part Irish. And then I went deeper into this rabbit hole and I found out that a lot of police in America actually happen to be Irish. And then I was like, oh my God, why has no one asked the Irish question? Because it's lying right there before. <laughs> it's, 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 it's lying, it's lying right out. there before. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but like on the surface when you hear that shit, you're like, oh okay, but that's 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 silly. You would never say that. That's like right. that's cartoonish. Mm-hmm. You would you wouldn't right. be like the Irish are secretly trying to control the world, and you know the Irish are in, infecting politics and infecting media and all this kind of shit. Like the majority, the vast majority of news corporations in the United States are not run by Jewish people. There is a over uh, let's say uh, a larger percentage of Jewish people in Hollywood. That's that's, but that's there's a lot of history behind that. It's yeah, not because they're trying to control the world. It's not. It's because in large part they were persecuted, and this was one of the fields in which they could work in. So there's a lot of like, if you look at it like that. But no one ever asked the Irish question because it's absurd. If you if you were like, right. but the and then what you realize that you're like, don't you get it? Then the the anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Make no sense. Make no also, sense. You, you, you... It's, it, it starts from a ridiculous position in the first place. Because at the end of the day, what is the argument he's making? This whole this whole argument, 
the only the reason and what he's couching it around and that that Jews control everything is to say, okay, they're they're causing me harm. They control everything, so they're able to stop my bag and stop my money. Well, let's let's pretend. Let's pretend that's even the re- that that's even the case. They have the wherewithal, and that's why. They do, uh, why though, bro? Like, were were you like? Let's say, let's say the Jew, the Jewish community just decided to become now. What the, what the fuck were you doing? Like, so you were spewing anti-Semitism. So now your big issue, your big gripe for why the Jewish community is bad is because they they don't like that. They're not fucking with you spewing anti-Semitism. I'm I'm so <laughs> sorry. Well, I'm like I keep mm-hmm. and like the arguments and the straw man of continuing it to compare it to oh no one was upset when the, uh he was spewing anti-blackness. Are we are we living in a mythical universe where we act like the communities that are most upset about something isn't upset about the thing that impacts them the most? Black people are who are going to be the most upset about anti-blackness. And if we as black people have continued, we are the ones like we're saving Kanye. You know what I mean? We love Kanye. We're going to defend Kanye. We're going to cape for Kanye. We're going to keep, you know, coddling Kanye and making excuses for Kanye. Why are non-black people going to be the ones to cancel him for anti-blackness? Are we living in a world where we pretend like everybody else, our eyes, care about anti-blackness more than us? Like, they don't follow our lead on that? I'm like, not because we fail to punish him for anti-blackness makes Jewish the Jewish community wrong for not wanting to tolerate his anti-Semitism. Like no other. Community yeah, that was a weird ass bullshit. thing. That was such a weird angle. It's it's, it's like uh, Blair brought up earlier. It's like <laughs> I, I think that like you know maybe white liberals tr- tuned into this around the TMZ anti blackness arc, but like yeah, that's such a strange thing to like lay at the hands of the black community to be like, well, right. did, did you not already check Kanye? And it's like, well, what the fuck, <laughs> you know? Right. And to put it on Jews, it's like, what is your argument? Oh, the white people didn't care. Like, white people overall, not specific to to, to Jewish people, oh, white people overall did not cancel him for anti-blackness? No! We know that! Like, why are we acting like white people are like, is this new? Is this new? Like, do you know white people to just be out here? If that were the case, if white people were out here matter about anti-blackness, then you... We wouldn't be talking about anti-blackness all the fucking time. Wait, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, you think I think I'm like the white people? Well, I'm like white people do not let their 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 um aversion to anti-blackness get them to like oppose real serious shit. Okay, like they they defend police and all kind of other shit. Like, you think they give a fuck about Kanye saying some anti-black shit? The, the fucking president be saying anti-black shit? They be like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. I think and I'm anti-Semitic them. shit too. Trump exactly. was so fucking anti-Semitic mm-hmm. by the He's standards. Like day. holy fuck. Like yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. Uh, listen, so I'm just like it's ridiculous. It's all oh the white people weren't upset about anti-blackness. Yeah, bro. Of course they never are. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we get upset, and if you are a white friend, say, oh yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes. Like. <laughs> What is behind? What are on your shelves, Lance? I've been I'm, I'm trying to like be in your business, but I like don't okay, know. Okay, so they are. okay, so we we got a bunch of plants. My chat has named them. So we have uh, Figgy Smalls over there, as well as Plantifa. Those are two of them. And then uh, behind me is a bunch of like literature. I I like to flex to say that like, oh yeah, I read the theory. So you got some Angela J- <laughs> Davis about uh, prison obsolete. You know, really that kind of shit. Just be like, yeah. oh yeah, no no, I've I've read the theory. I literally have the theory behind me. Don't worry. About right, it. right there. Uh, and, and then there's there, there's a Miss Pac Man machine uh, right behind me. Uh, that's the one that, at the very top. The one on the top. The, the one on the top shelf is that. Is that Republican spider plant? <laughs> uh, it's it's from. Uh, no, no Repub- yeah, right. Republican. All right. spider plant. Just, 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 well, just, I am just, slow just, today. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, you can actually see the fucking the endless blue turning wheel of Twitter that is all Twitter is now. That's that was my brain when I was like Republican spider plant. I'm not, but yeah, now uh, yeah, now I get it. <laughs> I love that. I, now I'm going to be in. Let me see what's behind you, Mike. Mike, this is your real room, right? Like, yeah, it's not a green screen. It's your real room. Yeah, no, this is it. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. The wall. So, so the wall. What's the wall? So what do you flex? Wallpaper? What do you flex? Yeah. So, this is uh, fake bricks. Mm hmm. Okay. This is, okay, that's this is foam that my cat rips off weekly. What's the cat's that name? I have to reapply. Svetlana. It's a Russian name. So. Conspiracies like with me being a Russian plant could proliferate, so we call I her really Spetty. Like that. But like, yeah, yeah, that's a great cat name. <laughs> yeah, Svetlana goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, she, um, yeah, she's she's a good girl. Aside from her ripping down the foam padding in the wall, um, so yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, and Claire, then because Matt and David have nothing for me we'll to never investigate. Know I know. I'm boring. Though, I, for a while, like, I thought, should I get a set? Like, should I do something with this? Because I've had the green screen forever. I've had the same background since I started, mm. um, like, six years ago, which is which is just, like, a graphic in Final Cut Pro. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's nothing, like, no one made it for me, like, nothing special. Um, Because, like, well, I don't know, there's benefits to, to having a background, gives you personality, but uh, there's also benefits to a green screen. So, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is Raheem. Oh my, my son. God. Oh. Yeah. I oh, love yeah, the pictures that you post of Raheem on Twitter. Yes, he's my pumpkin. Oh. He, he loves attention. He'd be a part of the foolishness. Like, oh, you want me to be sitting up here? I'll sit up here. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. And then it's just anime. You want to go now, Kat? Okay, goodbye. All right. he's like, Matt has a green screen, foot. too. Right. I'm not using it right now, though. No, yeah. Oh, so I, it's just like a like, okay. That's just my okay. screen in a white background. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was a tripper. It was like a green screen, but like turned white. No, I'm just in a very my 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 studio is a, a, a like a walk-in closet. So there's not. Oh, okay. There's nowhere to put any shelves or anything. Mm-hmm. It's literally just the room, and then I have the green screen. So you can't tell I'm just in this small room. <laughs> <laughs> I just living room it up. Like I'm just relying on my art, on my, on my, on my anime to carry me as on my couch. Like, oh yeah, that'll give me. It's a good vibes. backdrop. I like yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, like that's really good vibes. Piccolo, Yamcha, Bulma, Vegeta. And so when I was making the uh, that intro to the Leftist Mafia, I was asking Oyemi. I was like, hey, do you have a, a character, maybe like DBZ or something? That was my suggestion, by the way, that you want to have. And you were like, what is it, uh, Frieza or Vegeta? And it doesn't yeah, work. You can't, you can't do face swap on cartoon. It looks, it was too oh. scary. It, it was horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it I'm was not, horrifying. Not oh, it, it really was. It just, it just did not work. The technology is not there yet. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Mm. Yeah, no, I mm. love it. Yeah, no, Frieza and Vegeta are my faves. Absolutely. I love Vegeta. I hate Goku. I have this Goku black, though, but even I don't like Goku, but that's just because it really was perfect for the color scheme of my home, but... That's the only that's the only thing I don't endorse is Goku's presence on the wall, but everything else. <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't I don't mess with Goku. He never did it for me. But Vegeta, okay, can I, my guy. Can I can I ask a genuine DBZ question? Gonna nerd out for two seconds. Did you not find that series was just an endless cycle of hey? There's the worst possible entity or force about to destroy everything. It arrived. It has now weakened all of us, but not killed us. We must level up. We level up, and now our numbers go up. It's over 9,000. And then we defeat that entity and rinse and repeat over and over and over. Or we maybe collect the Dragon Balls, and then we wish for the dragon to defeat the entity. But then someone kills the dragon or something like that. But like, it was just like that endlessly, over and over and over. I, just, just one person's opinion. Yeah. But I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. I fucking rock with it. Yeah, that's right. It's very heavy. <laughs> yeah, just freeze a lot. Listen, to me, Dragon Ball Z, the best part of Dragon Ball Z is the shit talking. Honestly, it's the monologue. <laughs> First of all, I love a good monologue. I'm a monologue doing bitch in general. I'm like, woo! <laughs> I love a monologue. That's why I like a, I like an antagonist who talks spicy for me, Frieza. <laughs> so I'm like, I really didn't like my boy showed up, really got hot. <laughs> like, that's, what, that's what I like. I love that. Like, people just be stopped. They just stop. You just froze it in place while they talk they shit. Love it. Like, and you blow some shit up. Think about that. Imagine you can talk shit for like six episodes, then like, just, just like the place the fuck up. <laughs> six <laughs> episodes. Like, I will destroy you. You cannot destroy me. I have more power than you'll ever know. And you're like, oh, well, eventually we'll find out. Just, uh, wait until next week. <laughs> yes. I love that. Love the I've like, like just like dipped my toe in anime. Like, I'm not, like, if I start with, dra- if I, if I watch some Dragon Ball Z, where do I start? Because there's like a lot, isn't there? There's, there's different versions, or there's yeah. different like, mm. like. Oh yeah, there's what evolution. is worth watching? They're, they're like Pokemon. They, they they start to evolve into different creatures. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon's gotten crazy. I, I can't even follow Pokemon. <laughs> too many, I feel like yeah, I too many know. Pokemon. Dragon Ball Z, and I'm not like an anime kind of sore, but I started with Attack on Titan, and it was a very very good entry into the uh, some of the, the anime Kaylee universe, in, right? Uh, AOC is in. That's the one that Paul Gosar posted the. Uh, he posted a video with Marjorie Green as a Titan, 
And may- maybe that was Marjorie Green in it too. That was like slaying but the Titan. But doesn't Marjorie Green resemble one of the characters quite sharply? Oh, she's it, the Titan who ate Aaron's mom. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> and I've Identical. seen the photo comparison. They seem like yeah. When, like, I have a hard time differentiating between the two pictures. To be completely honest with you, there's also yeah. a Titan in there that looks identical to Rick Scott. I mean, identical, like based off of him. Um, well, that guy looks like look a fucking freak, too. anyways. Jesus Christ! Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really, do. I'm, I'm really pleased in myself that I don't even know what these folk look like. And I'm let me go look up Google Rick oh, Scott. Oh my god, so Rick Scott see, for not knowing what they look like. Snakehead Rick Rick Scott. Wait, you don't know Rick Scott. Slenderman. Wait, you know Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah, Come I know, on. of course. I know that fool. You'll uh-huh. you'll know you'll probably know Rick Scott when you see him because once you see him, it's like burned into your eyes. Um you can't no, unsee like, him. But he's definitely like given somebody person, like literally a lizard person. I was just mm-hmm. about yeah. to say he looks like somebody who would have ordered the capture of all the X Men. Like that's what he looks like. Like <laughs> very like very, very much so striker's boss. <laughs> like like that's what it's giving. <laughs> yeah, but no, I never seen this man a day in my life. Like Rick Scott and, and Mitch McConnell, I think probably the, the two craziest looking people in, in in Congress. That's that's a powerful Oh my god, a, somebody just posted so? a picture in the he, chat. Of, oh, of the Titan who ate Aaron's mom and Marjorie Taylor Green. Uh, let me see who posted it. That oh, sure. oh my god, it's optimism. You've got to click it, on it. It is on... actually pretty striking, to be honest it's, with you. It's it's horrifying. There's a lot of no, yeah. There's there's probably a mathematical equation that determines how close <laughs> these two images are to each other right now. <laughs> she ate Aaron's mom. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta bring this up for my for my uh, viewers here. This is freaking hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's one to one, right? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, That's David, you got to start with Attack on Titan. It's so good that I even read the manga, and I I've never read manga before. Well, I, I had I've, to, I had I, to I've watched it. some anime. I, I, I'm not completely fresh on it. Like I've watched oh, okay. a few animes, but in terms of like, because I was thinking about watching Dragon Ball Z, but I, I didn't know where to start with with that in particular because there's I don't know. There's a a lot there. Go Dragon Ball. If you're going to start, like, mm-hmm. if you want to do it and, like, truly... I mean, I personally, it might be at this point in my life, I'm not starting all the way. But if if you want to do it, do it. I say start at Dragon Ball. Because then, you at the very least, if you get tired and stuff, you will at least have been in the thing, the foundation that matter and not all the new shit. Like, lots of people who love Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z, like myself, are not watching the newer things. So I'd say Dragon Ball, go Dragon Ball mm-hmm. Z, go Dragon Ball GT. You know, do that right. there. I heard that Dragon Ball Z Super is like not nearly as good as Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, see, yeah, like new. Mm, st- I haven't new seen st- it though, but yeah, new stuff don't just be they be new. Yeah, yeah, it's the nostalgia probably too, but um, yeah. Oh, somebody says Super is a uh, Moon Yu. How's it going, Moon Yu? Says Super is best. Sorry. Oh, I've never oh heard Berserk. That Super. Berserk is supposed to come to uh, Netflix. I hope we get it in the U.S. Super is good. Okay, so maybe I misheard that. I I wonder who said Super was bad. Maybe it was Progressive Voice that told me that Super was bad. If so, then blame him for the misinformation. He's the one who told me it, and I'm just parroting it. I haven't seen it. So that guy's full of lies. Yes, blame Progressive <laughs> Voice. Actually, no, he's a good guy. Okay. I'll, I'll be right back in one second. Sweet, I'm hosted now. What else is going on, guys? <laughs> mm. <sighs> well, this is awkward. Bender, uh, <laughs> give me some some crypto updates here. What what's what's oh, going on sure. in the crypto world? That shit is like I feel like you're the expert there. Um, mm-hmm. I, I recommend your channel, your your podcast, to people whenever I cover crypto stuff. Uh, so yeah, what's What's the latest in, in the crypto world? <laughs> sure. Well, obviously this, this, this FTX story has been all over the news. That's it. That's That's been the crypto story. I mean, there's multiple tentacles here going into this with tons of companies and tokens and projects obviously feeling the pain of the FTX crash, which is affecting everything. But um, that's been it. FTX. That's been the main story. Uh for people who don't know, um, FTX was one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world. And a couple of weeks ago, a report from Coindesk and a report from a 
anonymous crypto journalist who goes by Mike Burgersberg basically uh, showed that FTX and its sister company, Alameda, um, were basically insolvent. They got, uh, you know, both of these reporters got a look at uh, Alameda's books and looked at what they are actually holding. And they found out that these companies that, uh, the, you know, the, the overarching FTX company, which was raising money, valuing it at something like, uh, geez, how much was it valued at? Tens of billions, if not over a hundred billion dollars, if I'm correct, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, this company that was valued at these billions of dollars actually had no liquidity. They had no, it was all their riches were all in worthless tokens that if they actually tried to sell, there was nowhere near the amount they claimed to have was there. In fact, uh, one of the things they tried to sell off to keep the company going, which was one of their biggest non-crypto assets, was $400 million in Robinhood stocks. Like that was what the company was built upon. So once this report came out, uh, the CEO of the largest crypto exchange, Binance, uh, decided that they were going to sell off all of their holdings of FTX's own crypto token, FTT. And when they did that and announced they were gonna do that, a ton of people in the crypto space said to themselves, holy shit, if Binance is, you know, liquidating their FTT holdings because they don't believe FTX is, is long for this world, we got to get our money the fuck out of FTX ASAP. So within something like a, a, a two day period, like six billion dollars were, were moved off of FTX. And so FTX was fucked. And so they tried to raise, uh, Sam Bankman Fried is the uh, founder and CEO of FTX. Uh, people are familiar with him because he has over the years, I mean, FTX was just founded in 2019. Uh, Sam Bankman Fried was this like uh, uh, tech wonder kid story of this, uh, this under 30 year old creating this uh, huge crypto exchange in just a few years worth billions of dollars. He himself quickly was on one of the richest, you know, the richest people list. He was worth uh, tens of billions, if, if not more, uh, for for that time. And so, you know, this the the, the whole uh, FTX came crashing down. They looked to, they actually reached out to Binance at first to see if they could do a deal. Binance announced that they were going to basically bail out FTX. They were going to buy it up. And so everyone was like, oh, whew, this is all saved. But then Binance also added an addendum that this is. Uh, tentative based on, you know, a due diligence uh, investigation. Less than 24 hours later, Binance came out, comes out and says, uh, we did our due diligence. This company's beyond fucked. We can't help here. So they decided not to buy FTX. So FTX had no, no, uh, nothing to do then, um, but to declare bankruptcy. Uh, they owe something like tens of uh, ten, at least something like ten billion dollars to creditors. Uh, they do not have that at all. Sam Bankman-Fried, who was again reportedly one of the richest, you know, on the richest people alive list, is now claiming he has about a hundred thousand dollars left to his name. Um, he's been, you know, this whole company is, was apparently run by uh, ten roommates in the Bahamas. That has come out. Um, yeah, the whole thing is just uh, a mess. This was this was literally one of the biggest crypto companies. Uh, Sam Bankman Fried was paying, uh, donating to all these Democrats and Republicans, trying to make himself like the major crypto player. He was involved in pushing various different crypto legislation. Uh, and, you know, you you had people talking him up and here we are. He's basically st sitting in the Bahamas waiting to find out what happens to him. Um, the media is absolutely <laughs> failing in covering his story. This the whole thing is 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 hilarious and ridiculous. But that's crypto, baby. I'm wait, just wait, amazed wait, how this shit like how does how does this guy that? even do this to begin like I, I, like this this, keep, this this shit keeps happening, right? Like people are just creating money out of nothing and then goes nowhere right, because so is, they never had so this is basically the scam he did like you know we, we know about ponzi's and pump and dumps and things like that what ftx did is a lot different it's called the flywheel scheme and basically what you do 
is you, for example, say you're creating your own token. I'm, you know, I'm starting a company and all of a sudden uh, I'm making Binder token. And I decide to, let's say, uh, hold, uh, let's say 60, 70% of Binder token for myself. And then I, you know, tell some investors that, oh, you could get in early, you can buy, buy in really cheap. And then you release maybe like, uh, 10% to them and they buy it up super cheap. So they're buying up hundreds of millions, if not billions of this token. And that's 10% there. I'm holding 70%. And then you actually put the, um, you know, the other 20% on the market. Now that 20% is where the actual money is coming in. So that is basically how that token is fluctuating because that's where the money's actually coming from. So people buy in, uh, you, know, you know, retail investors are buying up the token. So it goes from like, let's say 50 cents to dollar, two, three, four, five, six people are buying. This is going to be a huge binder, binder tokens to be big people. And so all of a sudden you got uh, this token with nothing backing it. It's worthless, but because people are buying it up and like, you know, the, the tulip uh, craze, all of a sudden this token is worth 20 bucks. Now, only 10%, 20% of that token was actually bought for 20 bucks, uh, you know, 20 bucks each, or, you know, some people got in for cheaper, but they're the people who spent the money on it. But I can now say, oh, I was holding uh, 70% of that. Each of those tokens I hold now valued at 20 bucks, baby. Mm. Doesn't matter that no one actually bought that, you know, each of those tokens that I'm holding for 20 bucks. That's what the tokens valued out now. I'm a billionaire and I go out to investors. I go out to, uh, you know, the, the VCs and I go, hey, I'm sitting on a multi-billion dollar company. We are worth that. Look how much our tokens worth. This is going to be big. They give me money. Oh, all of a sudden I got liquid cash from these VCs. What am I going to do with this liquid cash? Well, that, that, you know, that's basically the flywheel scheme, mm -hmm. the whole token thing, but then it continues where they get the VC money. And then all of a sudden, Oh, we're going to buy, you know, we're, 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 they treat it like it's revenue. And at the same time, if you're running an exchange, they're treating like uh, Sam Bankman Fried was doing, he, it, he was treating his, uh, retail investors, like regular people who are depositing at FTX, he was treating their money as revenue. And instead of, you know, like holding it or backing it or putting it in investments with, you know, like how banks do or things like that, he was taking that money and sending it to Alameda, the sister company that was the hedge fund, to wildly speculate. And, uh, you know, he's basically gambling with his customers' money. This is this is this is this is completely uh, you know unregulated. There's nothing to stop this. Um, any laws he broke is because of the fraudulent activity uh, related to him, you know, uh, uh, moving the money around or whatever. He'll get caught for like money, uh, you know, for like wire fraud or money laundering or something. But nothing he did with the flywheel scheme or any of that. None of that is illegal. That's amazing. Wild, hey, yo, Matt, what's, what's that your, people what's get your away professional with professional background? What's that? What? What's, what's your job, Matt? What's your, what's your professional background? Oh, no, oh yeah, I'm a journalist. Like a I, journalist. I, yeah. He was, he was, he was in the heart of fucking Gamergate. If you know Gamergate, he was in the I'm, fucking the centerpiece no of that. No lines. Yeah. No lines. I'm an old you, man. If you, now, if you was going to bet your money on it, do you think I know about Gamergate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not even a little bit. You have Dragon Ball Z. You have Dragon Ball Z art back there. On the I, I, Come Matt, on. You're a woman Matt, who's famous on the think, internet. <laughs> listen, I don't know nobody to lay no me. I, that, is, that is my true team. I didn't know. I, you know how I know all of you? <laughs> y'all Originally, I seen y'all say something about me. I'm like, oh. You're nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know nothing. The but panel I praised to the at some point. Like, oh. The only thing I heard, I listened to Matt, and I was like, "So they be lying." Mm. So somebody. <laughs> True. And then I was like, True. No wrong. Started. Yeah. No. I've been trying to stay away from this because the Bahamas. I hate when they have my country in mess, and I wanted the plausible deniability. I'm not intellectually qualified to figure out. I'm talking about this crypto stuff in general. So I've been trying to stay away from it. So this is, I was like, oh no, they see me hearing about the Bahamas scandal. They know I know about it. I'm going to have to buy it. So they have to stay away. <laughs>
I think that Matt's best work was the uh, Libtard 01 expose. I feel like that is oh my god, that was amazing. Or maybe the James Lindsay uh, fucking saga that's taking place right now. True, an ongoing saga. And hey, hold on, I want to get out in front of this. I am the OG original person who posted James Lindsay with the picture of the Nexium Cult high end member Nikki Klein and got blocked by him. I did that before he was kicked off of Twitter, before it was cool. Okay. I want to get that out there. <laughs> but since he has come back, since the account has returned, Matt Binder has been leading the charge and getting things to fucking trend on Twitter where people are posting pictures of James Lindsay and fucking Nikki Klein. And he's so mad. Like these snowflakes. Snowflakes, by the way, you know how they always call like fucking lefties snowflakes, cucks, all this kind of shit. Like he's straight up begging daddy Elon right now. He's like, please stop it. It's really hard. All these people keep posting pictures of me <laughs> with the pedophile. Ball. This motherfucker who's always talking about snowflakes such snowflakes is a pussy in the first place. Like, let's think about the things that we can say to you. Like, if I think you're soft, like I think you're like snowflakes, that's what you came up with. You already know the person who uses snowflakes is the person who was losing the roast. Like, so you already, that tells you every snowflake. <laughs> Like you ever, you ever, you ever been talking shit, and that's how you really got somebody. <laughs> you, should, you should have known when they call this that. That's true. That's true. Uh, Matt, I mean, I gotta on? say, I am, I, I am, I am, uh, you know, I, 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 I tried not to pat myself on the back, but I, I am truly proud of the James Lindsay thing. I, I love the fact that this guy <laughs> will never. Never be able to say, okay, groomer to another, you know, teacher, LGBTQ person without doctor, nurse, his, doctor without without his Twitter feed filling up with that photo of him literally sitting next to a woman he calls his friend who yep. was convicted sex trafficker Keith Raniere of the Nexium, the leader of the Nexium sex cult, his, one of his lieutenant commanders in the cult who helped groom women as Ranieri sex slaves. And brand them. Abused, and fucking and brand, brand them. them. <laughs> and, and on top of that, not, she's not someone who's come out and been like, I was brainwashed or I was a victim. No, to this day, she is his staunchest defender, his number yep. one supporter. She's trying yep. to get him out of jail right now with this whole narrative that the FBI planted evidence. This is a man who groomed apparently uh, kids as young as 12, uh, as allegedly long. had allegedly raped a 15 year old. Yep. And this woman is his biggest defender and helped siphon innocent victims to him for him to abuse. And yep. these OK groomer anti LGBTQ conservatives who see everyone they hate as pedophiles are hanging out with her left and right. I cannot wait for these people to get i mean it's already they already got what's coming to them they'll never that mother be say, called okay, breakfast groomer. cereals groomers do you remember that he like it was a box of fruit loops and it said like what are your pronouns he him she her they them and he was like groomer cereal so you were calling fucking breakfast cereals groomers while you were hanging out with the inner circle member of the fucking sex trafficking women branding ring like holy fuck that's bad every accusation is a confession right over and they could and just, over they could, they could just come at they could just come out and he, Wait, could, just, he could just come I out and say, count. Wait a second. You know, it'd be taking me a little minute to Pause realize, it. you know, this woman has been in my <laughs> notification. This woman has talked shit on my sort of, I think this person used to follow Wait, me. Like, Nick, just, Nikki Klein? Yeah, bro. I feel, I see, first of all, James Lindsay talked shit on me like two years ago in 2020s. So I blocked him then. Um, but her for sure. I've seen this white lady, this face, like, well, in my, in my notifications before. I wish I remember what shit she was talking, but I didn't know. I'm never. I told y'all I really stay out of so white on white crime. Like I, so I really don't get involved. <laughs> like I don't. <laughs> I don't know this part of the internet. Like as soon as I see them, like these kinds of things, as soon as they show up in my notifications, I block instantly, and I don't give a shit. I don't care that they're gonna be like, you know. <laughs> but James Lindsay, I do remember in like two years ago on Twitter. That's actually he was kind of one of the first people that started bothering me on Twitter before I even had a platform and kind of caused it to happen. There was this um. 
school segregationist Maud Moran and and that works for my or she's a public defender and she's r- running for like an education board position on a literal school segregationist platform like it mm. she's just racist as fuck so they were like Jesus. oh yeah you support school yeah. segregation that's really racist <laughs> and the article and the interviews and she was like old nah, I can't racist. Be- right like old school like you wild in this <laughs> and so they were like um, you know, that's real racist. And she's like, oh, I can't be racist because I'm a public defender. And so, right. And I was like, ma'am, hold on, ma'am. <laughs> like, let's not invoke the job. <laughs> You're very much so still a racist. Two things can be true. I'm sure your clients felt it as well. So when I say that, here it comes. And again, I probably didn't have a hundred followers. There was no need. I don't know why, but that's because they they existed a community of these that are homies. So probably sent, you know what I mean? Anybody that quote tweeted mm-hmm. or whatever sent it to this world and he and his little followers started like harassing me John. I was like, fuck y'all. <laughs> like we can, we can do this. We can do this all day. He called me a groomer on Twitter. Maybe like I'd say close to 20 different times. Just like that would be his response. He would quote tweet me and be like, okay, groomer. Okay. Groomer. Every single fucking time until I started posting that picture of him and fucking Nikki Klein. And, and then he didn't get mad until his fans turned on him. When his fans all of a sudden were replying to it, it was like, I hate the surfs, no fan of the surfs, but can you condemn or explain what the fuck is going on here? And then it was like, block, instantly. And it was like, that. that's when it was like, it was too much, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Fuck First of all, that picture looks crazy. Like beyond the fact, I just seen the photo. Yeah. Fuck the, fuck the, them. fuck the, even without the background. Like, again, this is what I keep saying. Here's the thing, these people are, these people are clearly like very hypersensitive. Then, right? And like clearly they're mean, oh, right? Yeah. All of this, like all jokes aside, these people are lame. Like that's really what their real issue is. Everything that they're really galvanized around is feeling like they're fucking losers. And so they create a hub and a space for other losers to say, hey, oh no, this loser shit is cool. Cause again, okay, groomer is not a fucking cool, cause that's not clap back. Like, you didn't, it's not cool. Snowflakes isn't cool. None of this shit is really doing anything. That's why they need to occupy in numbers. But if you just, like, clown them on the corniness, because fuck the lady's background, whatever she was accused of, that's even extra crazy. The picture itself looks fucking crazy. No, no, no non-loser fucking human being takes no picture. What the fuck is this? Why, why? <laughs> What the fuck is this? Yes. I don't even if this yes. is a stock photo, it would be viral for looking fucking crazy. Like I don't I don't need to know what her what, what she does in her free time to, to realize that something is a foot. What the fuck is this? Is, There's a what is this? <laughs> Just take it all in. Like, what? What is? <laughs> I, I have to. I have to say, there's a there's an added sort of sick part to that photo that I haven't really tweeted about because I actually felt uncomfortable even like putting it on my feed. But one of the victims of the Nexium cult said that um, Keith Raniere, the leader, would have the women line up naked and spread their legs like that for them to take a group photo. Um, oh my god! Because he wanted photos of yeah. their Jeez. so so that is an added like fucking context to that photo that yeah. is so disgusting that I honestly didn't even want to I, I I was like mm. I, maybe, maybe if he really comes at me again I'll have to unleash it but I'm I'm yes he I, blocked yeah. you yet oh you so you... oh he blocked me he blocked me oh, okay. but he's talking oh. about me from behind the block yeah I know you're so and you haven't put it and you haven't put it out yet. Y'all are built really different than me. Oh, First of I, all, I, I like, gotta I gotta tell you, I have more photos of different conservatives with Nikki Klein. Uh, I am so many. Yeah, there's so many. It's it's a treasure trove. It's they, amazing. Uh, like, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, Matt. I think they all started being friends with her before they Googled her. I think that's what happened because she started Impossible. getting into Impo- right wing. No, 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 no. I got I got to interrupt you right there. You think they support? Oh wow. Okay. I, I let me tell you, James Lindsay. Took that photo that we're all looking at there. He took that photo in April of 2022 at like the some some stupid uh, debate thing um, in like Milwaukee or whatever. Uh, and the panel that Nikki Klein was invited to be on was asking questions. The panel was called something like asking questions about the FBI and other three letter agencies. What? Other expertise does Nikki Klein have to be on that fucking debate stage to talk about the FBI and three letter agencies than her involvement with Nexium? She was on that. I watched part of the uh, debate. I, I tried to watch as much as possible. I went back and watched it. The entire time she's trying to vaguely, without bringing up Nexium, claim that they that the FBI regularly plants evidence on people and. 
Destiny, who we all have different feelings on, he's up there uh, pushing back. So, you know, I don't have a problem with people being up there if they were invited to, you know, debate or whatever. But James Lindsay's on that stage with her, sitting next to her, backing up her argument, and even at one point brings up, you know, it's really not fair if, like, you know, the FBI could come at you and be like, oh, here you are looking at, like, four, you know, I have digital uh, fingerprints of you looking at 14 or 15-year-old child pornography. Oh, and you don't remember that. That's not fair. I, I, my mind was blown. He was trying to say that like they fabricated it or whatever. But the fact that he would use that specific thing yeah, there that's, with her that's on terrible. that stage yeah, without, it. without it, I should clip it. I should clip it and put yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Without a doubt, there was no, the, yeah, what, is her expert, what is her expertise on three letter agencies? Beyond, she was a fucking actress on Battlestar Galactica. She yep. was on there to run a front, run a cover for Keith Raniere in her yep. crusade to get him out of jail. The dude is in prison for 120 years. That's how solid that case was. They got him on sex trafficking and like sexual abuse and laundering and an array of things. This dude is guilty as charged. Multiple victims from all over the place, victims uh, p poor teenagers from Mexico all the way up to Hollywood actresses all coming out and saying yeah, what they did to him. Yeah. This dude is dead to rights and this woman, yes. the right wing, is sitting with and hanging out with and proudly defending is his biggest defender. Okay, groomer my ass. These people are the fucking groomers. These right wing yep. fucking pedophile defenders. You know, you don't mm. say much, but when you get in your bag, you sure to get to the bottom of that fucking bag. <laughs> 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 They're gonna pause it. There we go. There we go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I felt that. Well, and to add to all the Nexium stuff, um, they also, all the right-leaning folks that want to, like, be cool with Nikki or whatever, um, Keith also was forcing abortions upon the women that he was essentially enslaving. And that oh, doesn't God. really get talked about, but he impregnated, and this was according to testimony from one of the women, that she testified that her and her two sisters were all impregnated by Keith, and he forced all of them to essentially terminate those pregnancies. Yet, while claiming to be so pro-life, they just want to overlook a vast majority of these issues with what Nikki was involved in. And I find that typical, unfortunately. Yeah. So fucked up. So fucked up. Like the amount of shit, like the, like HBO, I think has like a, what a six to eight episode entire documentary on how bad that shit was. Like when I saw James and Z, they, first, they, like, you, you, around. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt, but they no, just no. put out a new, they just put out season two of it. And oh, there's, Nikki okay, there's seasons. There's se oh, sorry, and I didn't know. I didn't know there was like, okay, there wasn't enough season, shit in the first. We gotta fucking have season two. They, God they damn. didn't even they didn't even get to Nikki Klein in season one. In season two, she is the fucking star. She is oh, all over oh, that shit. It's I can't out, wait to watch just came two. out right now. Oh Literally, yes, I, I will gobble that shit up for this shit to come out. Like it, it's oh. it's yeah yeah. But it, oh, what's the show that called? Not, is the that vow? The vow. The vow. Yeah. Okay. Season, okay. By the way, like a content warning for anyone who wants like wants to watch season one. It's intense. It's intense. There, there's the worst shit possible of human beings doing to human beings done in that shit. But the thing that really fucks with me is that in this like this current culture war where it's just like the right will not shut the fuck up about like groomers, pedophiles, anyone who's gay or trans or intersex or anything. All of them are groomers or pedophiles. In the midst of all that, they are completely fine palling around with these motherfuckers. Or because they're like, what? They're bigots. Like, that's the problem. Like, because they're bigots, the whole thing is disingenuous. It's a politics of gas. Like, we need to stop letting them reframe and, and, and adopting their language and shit. Ain't no fucking culture wars. It's just a bunch of bigots hating on every marginalized community. That's all the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. That's why every time, yes, there is a litany of hypocrisy. It's in our face. It's plain as fucking. It's all we got is hypocrisy. We got Herschel Walker talking all this shit and look what he's doing. We got Madison Cawthorn, we look what he's doing. We got Marjorie talking all this shit, look what they're doing. We got Mac Ace talking all this shit, look what they're doing. We got Donald Trump talking all this shit, look what they're doing. They're talking all this fucking shit but look what they're doing because all they're really saying to you is we fucking hate other 
Anybody we deem as other, anybody that's not us, anybody that's a part of a marginalized community, fuck them. That's all it means, all right? The problem is when we keep trying to take all these, like, um, fake pretenses and all these obviously, obviously, obviously disingenuous-ass bullshit they say to us, and then when they, they act inconsistent, we're like, hey, 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 you don't see that you're being a little inconsistent? And they're like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, they're not. Their one philosophy is fuck you. That's the one philosophy. That's, that's the only true. Part, that's the only politic they practice. They don't give a fuck about none of this shit. Oh, groomers. They don't give a fuck about children. These are people who literally get up and two seconds after, sh- like, ch- like children have been shot to death at schools and they're like, <laughs> my guns. You know what I mean? These people are talking about all this crime and all this bullshit. And then, <laughs> that's, 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 so really, that's really how they give it up. That's really how they give it up. They don't give a fuck about any of this stuff, right? Do they? Do they? Do they care at all? No, they don't. They don't. They're full of shit. Because all they really care about is them fucking selves and lying in their pockets. That's the real tea. They don't give a shit about no goddamn children. They don't care what Nikki Klein did or whoever was hanging out with whomever. What? Or, or or fucking child beauty mm-hmm. pageants, or fucking child marriages, yes. or the right. Catholic fucking church. You never hear them shit. say shit about that shit. Oh, it's like, oh, this has been institutionalized in Canada. All of a sudden, all these people are being like children, indigenous kids being raped by the Catholic church. There, there's your there's your story. There's your conspiracy. It, it goes from the highest levels of government all the way down through the church to the kids. You have it. It's in front of you. You don't need to go after Balenciaga, like fucking ads, all that other distractions. Here are the pedos. We, we, we know who the pedos are. What are you doing? Yes, they don't care. They don't give a fuck mm-hmm. about none of that. They don't give a damn about none of that shit. None at all. Not, nothing at all. And that's the problem is too often we allow Republicans to play a politics of distraction with us. They distract us with all these things and we go for it every fucking time. It's literally just political fetch. They're like, oh, let's talk about the crown. I'm talking about this. And they're like, and we're responding to all their, their bullshit. Fuck them. Fuck them and all their nonsense. Like when you think about it, when, when you and when you're really honest, and it's funny, I think about this all the time because I'm unrising and they'll be so fucking mad that I'm like not interested in some stupid fucking conspiracy nonsense that they've come up with to discuss. And I'm like, yo, there's like real shit happening on the other side. Like I couldn't be plugged into this. Like I'm just here about Republican Spider-Man for the first time because I'm I'm busy trying to figure out how to decarcerate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm busy trying to decarcerate prisons. People are trying to Thanks, get Mike. you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks it's for teaching us that Mike. <laughs> Serious shit happening on the side. Like, think about it. In the same, there's no fucking reason why there was just a shooting. Like, think about this. Like, you have little hate crimes that just happened. A shooting at a gay club. Gay people dead. But yet, the fucking leading narrative that we're discussing in the LGBT community is some fucking groomer nonsense that they fucking... Because it's a distraction. That's all the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. A politic of distraction to focus on the bullshit and the depravity that they want to project onto other fucking people. That's all it is. We need to stop wasting our time engaging in their bullshit nonsense. They don't... And, they, and, 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 and another thing... And another fucking thing to the culture war nonsense. Have if other people have a something they're fighting for and you oppose what they're fighting for, you don't both have a cause. That's yeah. not what I mm-hmm. one group has a cause and you oppose their shit. And you know what's evidence to that? Because again, on the other side, nobody has time to even know all these fucking actors and all this bullshit and stuff because it's all so much trivial shit. It's just a bunch of other white people talking and complaining and saying the same fucking nonsense and hateful shit on the other side. Whereas other people are trying to like fight for rights and stuff and then you turn around and you come on this or island exist. like or exist. Or exist. Like, trans people like, I just want to exist, please. Like that's yeah. it. <laughs> like yeah. and there's, there's no like, like it's getting in your face, it's fucking in front of you. No, I just like, wanna I wanna be here. Yeah, that's it. And they're like, why should I have to like <laughs> Respect somebody else and like what? Yeah. Can't pronouns. Call them call them? <laughs> I I don't know how to use pronouns. I haven't used them my entire life. Like in every interaction I've ever had with another adult ever. How do I have to learn this? It's really complicated to me. It's like, oh, oh yeah. It's, uh, this is this is a you thing. This is a burden. This is a cross to bear. God damn, that sucks. That's what gets so frustrating about covering this stuff. It's just all of this is to me is so just like this is it's normal to just not care about what people want to do with their own lives like to, to have to explain to an audience why these people are wrong why they're why they're bigots like it feels so like needless because to me it should be obvious it should be obvious that hey these people are obviously wrong they're trying to control people's lives the people that just want to be who they are just let them live their lives like to have to explain all of this and like to have this be, to be like a a running narrative to, to for this to be the thing that the Republicans ran on, like one of the main pillars they ran on was being what anti groomer or anti trans is so insane, so, so completely insane. And, and because of that, like it, it forces us to 
at least it feels like it forces us to have to engage with it because we have to push back on that garbage. Because if we just let it go, then it seems like we're running away from that topic, right? Like it seems like that Mm -hmm. we, we are ceding ground to them and their argument when they are wrong, clearly. But to have to explain that they're wrong already now now puts the argument on the same like on the same right. level in a way because we have but to explain why they're wrong it's there, there's there, there's no winning like you right. either ignore it and it expands or you address it and you you right. treat it like a real argument defense. like there's, you're, you're right, right but it's also the problem time. is the way we do it we do it like and i don't mean we as in us but in, in, on our side of the aisle right there's a way that you can say the sky is blue is grass and green and leave it at fucking that, right? Like the only time anybody questions whether or not the sky is blue and the grass and grass is green is if you start trying to have a fucking discussion. Like let's discuss color and maybe this and blah, blah, blah. And that's what people do. Instead of just calling the shit what it is and you know what I mean? What it obviously plainly is, people go, okay, well, let's pretend, you know, let's, you know, try to remember maybe he's saying this and understand it. And they're always trying to look for some fucking good faith basis and some bad faith shit. And that is the problem. And then what happens is you take some nuggets, some bullshit, some wild shit that they were saying, because at the end of the day, the reason the status quo becomes the status quo by being normalized because we hear it so fucking much. You know what I mean? Like it becomes pervasive and it's normal. So at the end of the day, these their batshit crazy bigotry is the same thing. They're just constantly rebranding it, right? Like, oh, they ran in this anti-groomer thing. What they ran in ran on was homophobia. They've always been running on homophobia. That they just they're just packaging it differently, right? But if we have these conversations and instead of just simply calling it that, what we do is we go. Let's start having deep dives and breakdowns and blah, blah, blah. And maybe this and the other side. And always be always trying to other side some bullshit. No. And I don't know why we play that game because they don't fucking do it with us. Have you ever seen me literally have the stats, the studies, the degrees, the whatever, all the reasons why you say that? Do you, do they humor your, do they humor reality? They won't even humor reality. Mm -hmm. Like they won't even humor reality. (laughs) And we're over here weeding through fucking bullshit. Trying to be like, oh, maybe. Um, <laughs> so, so that's the problem. It's like, yeah, address that bullshit, but address it. Just address it and move on. But instead, what we do is we give them our platforms. We, you know what I mean? We talk about it. We let it become the thing. We embrace it. There's no reason why the la- like our side of the world, whatever, don't before anybody shoot me with their big gun, but the left, liberal, whatever you want to call it, there's no reason this side of the aisle should have embraced culture wars the way that they did, like cult- culture wars and all this different nonsense. And there was no fucking culture wars. They were the same old school bigots doing bigoted shit. But instead, by doing that, it automatically paints it as a two-side thing mm-hmm. when that's not oh, what it is. And, and, and by the way, it's so much easier for them. If, if they just say, hey, by the way, CRT basically means that all white people are racist and white babies are racist and it's the most scary thing ever. You don't want CRT in your schools. That's like, uh, it, there's so much more work to do where you push up on the other direction where you're like, it's like a boulder up a hill. You're like, okay, so that's not true at all. This is not taught in schools. And that, that's not what this is about. These are actually trying to actually analyze how society works. But it's like, already you've lost it because the person on the other side is like, I heard this means that there's racist white babies right. and this fucking makes me angry. And now I want to go into the school system. I want to stop this shit. I want to make sure right. that no one ever says that white babies are racist. And everyone is so angry then. Right. And that shit fucking sells. But imagine if you never fucking... got in the weeds. Like imagine yeah. if when the CR, when critical race theory first came up as a thing they mentioned, rather than instead of a bunch of people who, this is the problem. You have to recognize when you are not the person most qualified to have certain discussions, right? Like there's certain conversations I don't wait in because I'm not going to be the best advocate for it because I'm not as I'm not as informed, but I have a louder voice and they're going to listen to me. And now we done fucked up and muddied up the fucking conversation and listening to me. And that's what happened with critical race theory. None of these motherfuckers, journalists, lawyers, any of them, none of them knew what the fuck it was. They don't know it. They didn't <laughs> study it. They're not familiar with it. But instead of just fucking coming out and saying, actually, I don't need to know what it is because this is actually just a fake. This is a pretend. This is a strong man argument just to attack black shit any books any books by black people <laughs> anything about it's black true. stuff that's what it's they, true. They have, and they should have come out like that but instead what did they do come and get in the weeds with them but they don't no one knows what the fuck they're doing so now when this big muddy thing that appears like there might have been some legitimacy in people and now it becomes about this critical race theory rather than just immediately dismissing a stupid fucking argument mm-hmm. and then we, yeah. in the weed, we in the weeds now we in the weeds Well, and they're so good at setting the agenda. I mean, think about the timing of all of this. Like the critical race theory thing came after the George Floyd protests, which is for the first time you have like white suburban people 
understanding, oh, wow, maybe people of color have a point that the police are violent and they brutalize minority communities. And then CRT drops. And they're just, they're really good. Like, I feel like we're always the ones who are playing defense and they're always the ones who are playing offense. They're always the ones who are creating the news and we're always the one who are reporting on the news that they say. So there's absolutely something to what you're saying. It's, it's difficult to, it's difficult to like, let it go. Cause like you have to respond, but how do you get to that point where we're not just on defense and we're playing offense you too. That's what's hard for me. Frame it. You know, I, I think about this all the time, like as a as a lawyer, right? Because it's how you how you frame arguments, how you how you use language, how you let someone um, craft a narrative. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's saying what. If the person, if you allow the original person to determine what language you use, you've already fucking lost. And that mm. is the problem. It does always seem like we're playing defense because we are always responding. We're always adopting how we just let them frame the narrative instead of checking this. Like I remember once I was having a debate with a white guy in law school and I was talking about gentrification and he responded to me, you know, and say like, he's trying to oppose me, my argument about gentrification, but he used the words gentrification. And I said, hey, you need to say redevelopment. The minute you said gentrification, you done fucked up. You conceded my fucking point. You let me set the framing for how we see it. Once mm. you once you accepted the bad framing, that's what it is. And that's what we do. Instead of, you can't let them have that fucking narrative. Abandon their point. narrative. They don't know what to do with it. If you watch anytime I'm on Rising, really- I abandon their bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the web. You fuck that. Like, you know what I mean? And when the first time I came out written up written house, I'm not gonna have whatever stupid ass conversation y'all are usually accustomed to having about written house. Let's talk about uh, uh um a slippery slope on self-defense being, you know what I mean? Like how this will in fact a whole thing they don't understand because they don't fucking understand it. They don't know anything. All they know mm. to do is frame stupid ass arguments and we get we get caught up in it. So just that, that's that's a really uh, great point. And, and slope is a slippery slope. It's a logical fallacy. So, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes like your the lawyer uh, response to it is actually it makes sense because like I cover like the first thing that I saw from you from Rising was the trans segment and like it was so effective because of the way that you like easily swatted it aside. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, no, that's a great point. That's a great exactly. point. Exactly. That's all. That's what's what it is. Is like you dismiss you dismiss it, it, and it, and it works both ways, right? Like and mm-hmm. as as a lawyer, if, if if someone has a has a has a, a an argument that you can't beat, you can see, you know what I mean, or a smaller argument. Instead of making that argument bigger and stronger than what it is, you can see their good argument from the beginning and you fucking swat it away. There's so many times that like, you know what I mean. There's so many times Robbie's had like, I there's a there's a um there's a segment he does a, a, a radar on something. I don't even remember what it was about. It was a he was trying to rehabilitate the DeSantis about something, right? It was like, oh, mm. it actually turned out. It's like it turned this thing that's been going around. The DeSantis actually did this law. It turns out he didn't do it. And I'm like. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, if he didn't do that, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nail him to the cross on that or whatever it's valid. Moves on. Now let's talk about all the fucking shit I got about this and I moved in now. Now before he knows it, you've lost your whole your steam because I because you didn't get me. fine. I don't give a fuck. Concede your point. Now let's talk about all the other shit. You know what I mean? And that's the problem is we get too overwhelmed with trying to play that game with them. Rewrite the game. Like, why are you so to me that's that's, that's, sm- the approach. that's smart. Yeah, yeah, I dismiss them all the time. I think it's a bad argument. Fuck that argument. You know what I mean? I'm addressing it and move on. <laughs> like, like, can, I, yeah. can I just say, I, I don't know if all of your audiences or any of you know this. Have you seen the bombshell about DeSantis that just came out? Like no. the whole Guantanamo Bay shit? Oh, yeah. Sa- oh, where he tortured so, was a torturer? Okay, so he wasn't personally mm-hmm. a torturer. He was someone who people who were tortured would have to speak to and would lie to them about being the good cop, basically being like, hey, by the way, uh, are you being treated well? What scares you? And then learn which torture was the most horrifying. This is a firsthand account from someone who was there while they were being tortured. And apparently during some of the worst torturing would be laughing in the background because he was the one who fed other people information about that. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. no one knows this okay. about DeSantis. So hold this on. is horrifying. You're saying that Ron DeSantis is a bad person? <laughs> <laughs> right. Say, yes, I'm sir, saying worse know. than we knew. <laughs> worse than we knew. Worse okay? than who knew. I keep trying to tell y'all, on my side of the internet, we fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Black I've Twitter been, was all over this. <laughs> I have a whole compilation video of just telling people, listen, Ron DeSantis is going to be a fucking problem. Me and my daddy, actually, you know, I was I was very honored to meet my daddy in this conversation when I went home to the Bahamas. My daddy was like, oh, you know, they're really sleeping on Trump. It's going to be Trump. I'm like, daddy? I, I'm fucking telling you, open your eyes. DeSantis is a fucking problem, daddy. He's like, oh no, it's coming. Trump, da, 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 da. The Trump thing came out, and I, I he, my dad didn't come out and admit it. He just didn't say shit about Trump no more. I was like, ah, 
You you see the devil I've been trying to tell you about. <laughs> that that <laughs> there is not fucking playing. He's not fucking around. That right there. He, he's honestly he's more sinister. You know why? Because because there's less buffoonery to it. Trump's buffoonery yep. is what allows mm-hmm. people to pretend like he's True. less sinister and dangerous and insidious as he is. Which are like, and because and people are so focused on on the glitz and the glam and the attention and the fanfare around that level of clownery and the showmanship of it, they allow a more insidious, a far more, you know, intelligent character to, like, the DeSantis to do wicked stuff in the shadows, because DeSantis is fucking evil, my guy. Like, also, Trump doesn't believe a lot of that shit, by the way. I don't think Trump legitimately in his heart of hearts was always, like, you can see in the past, right, he he was like, he was, like, pro-choice, uh, he was kind of friendly towards LGBTQ+, plus in the sense that he worked with them, so he was an outright yeah. bigot kind of stuff, but, like, DeSantis legitimately is willing to push legislation that will affect like trans people, gay people, LGBTQ+, mm-hmm. plus, you name it. Like DeSantis is a true believer. That's the fucked up shit. That's what people yeah. need to know about him. Yeah. It's scary. A scary man. I've been you. Really scary. Yeah. Very, very much some, something for us to be highly concerned about. Yeah. I've been you. I've, I've been clogged DeSantis with some scary shit. Mm-hmm. It's like mentor. fascist whack-a-mole. Like yes. one goes away, another one pops up. The uh-huh. Sanders will go away. Some other fascist who's more scary will pop up. Like, how long are we going to be doing this shit, man? It's it's really frustrating and demoralizing. Listen, listen, and now they own Twitter. <laughs> True. No, they run Twitter too. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like my yeah, replies have been. Oh, dude, I, they've been filling every single reply. It's like you know that uh, that line. Like, I'm something of a scientist myself. Like, it's, now my replies are like, I'm something of a neo-Nazi myself. I'm like, oh wow, this never used to be this bad. I used to get hate. I used to get you should unalive yourself. Blah blah blah. You're a race traitor. All that weird shit. But I never got the like it just filling up with fucking full on right wing like neo-nazi shit that's the yeah that's were, you, were, it's, y'all it's on the, were y'all on the mass purge list thing they did because i i was one my, my followers sent it to me that's the only reason i knew like you know but i'm assuming y'all gotta be on the list if i'm on the list y'all gotta be on the mass. i, I, I thought didn't check. I was and then someone in my discord said no and i'm like this feels like i'm not as metal as i thought i was like that would have been pretty <laughs> metal to be part <laughs> no, of the and, group and you know and that's hilarious because in my mind i thought i thought i might not be like oh i'm not i'm not you know what I mean? Like I might eh, look at look at I turned out. You you wanted to be there, but it's rude. They put me boy. Like I'm still there. <laughs> they said they said I'll forget lines, but get that block over there. <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> Make sure she's there. <laughs> We got to make our own uh, list. Every, wait, every, I want to hear everyone. Did all, all of y'all are you on the list? I didn't check. I don't think I am. I only went through a couple of screenshots. I went through like three or four, and I'm like, okay, I can't. I, I don't. I don't care if I am. Uh, but nobody <laughs> sent it to me, which Someone is. Sent it to me. That's the only reason I knew. Yeah, I, I couldn't go through it all, so I don't think I. I, I doubt that I would be on, but who knows? Hold on, hold on. Ma- Matt, I kind of confirm that y'all aren't on the list. I can make this about me being black. Come on, yeah. don't tell me y'all aren't on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was I on want the list. to be on it on though. It. Good. I was You're on the it. list. You yeah. were. But okay, good. Oh, come on, but it's, it's still there. Matt is the next people of color on this call. <laughs> no, I'm half indigenous. I I, I'm, I should be I, I should be in the triage. <laughs> wasn't there, wasn't, wasn't there, how, how many people? There's a lot of people on this list, wasn't there? There was like thousands of people, right? It was like five thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah you guys people, weren't on. You left it? The three I thought white man out, Matt. Thousands of people <laughs> left the three of them white men out. <laughs> <laughs> The same rapper, they got me and you. We knew. The white man was sure. I might be here. Why was I being left out? Come on. I, I'm as white as mayonnaise is delicious. Come on now. I actually <laughs> found out I was I actually found out I was on the list because my, my sister texted me. It was like, Did you know you're on this list? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I had to check. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah, I, that's I, a scary text I, I, to get. Like, you're on this list. Did you see it? And you're like, wait, <laughs> what, the, what kind of a list? You're on the list. I heard Illuminati. It was, you're the last I heard one. It was, Illuminati. You gotta, you gotta fess up. I heard it was lazily put together, though. I heard it was like a Twitter list by some like prominent like anti-fascist person, and it was like just a list of who they followed or something like that. It was something weird like that. Oh. Oh, look at y'all hmm. not being followed by the anti-fascists. Look, 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 you see the tea, that's why he was in trouble again. <laughs> look at y'all, I made the guys <laughs> We have to do better to get on the next list. Yeah, that's honestly, for sure. 
Hey, on, on a totally serious note, I should say, by the way, before I have not heard if the Illuminati is on the list yet, before that is like revealed, a lot of serious activists who do a lot of really good work and shout out to Chad Loader, by the way, who has been targeted yeah. by Andy No, as well as a lot of fascist communities who does a lot of really good work and activism online. Those individuals, the ones who are on the front lines a lot of the time, especially like a lot of those Twitter accounts, like, uh, you know, the, the what is it, the John Brown Book Club kind of shit, where they're actually like actively fighting up against people online. Um, they're actually targeted, like legitimately targeted. Like Andy No yeah. actually targets those kind of groups kind of thing. I so, you know, I, I'm joking about the fact that I wasn't, you know, uh, metal enough to be on that list. But like, you know, Chad Loader has to deal with that shit on a regular basis. Like they've mm. been actively targeted, as has their family, as has their friends kind of thing, because they're like, you know, always going up against Andy No. Yeah, and anyways, Illuminati, sorry, re reveal the truth. Oh, I don't even know what this list is, so I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> I knew what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't even know what this list is. I'm just thinking about it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Just for research. Said, posted without comment, just for research purposes. The white men weren't sure if they wanted to listen. The white woman ain't even ever heard of the fucking list. <laughs> So there's a list made of apparently 5,000 Twitter accounts that are Antifa. Like these are the CEOs of Antifa, the super soldiers of Antifa. It's nonsense, but it's just basically a list for all like the far right to be able to identify leftist accounts. And like, you know, they are the true snowflakes. They are the true fucking like, you know, they're the ones who actually want to censor. They're the 1984 George Orwell, uh, you know, group thing kind of shit. They want to make sure that every single person who's on this list is like flagged flag Elon Musk, make sure they got kicked off the account, that kind of shit. Well, that's has it has it has it even worked? Like, have people actually been manned off that list? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, I've seen that a bunch of left wing, like, other than those people you just mentioned, like it's weird because I've seen a bunch of leftists get um, uh, suspended. Like, I saw. Andrew Lawrence of Media Matters gets suspended this morning, and uh, mm. Dean Baker, the Economist, got uh, suspended this morning. Uh, but then a few hours later, their accounts were reinstated. And then I'm thinking, like, okay, so obviously there are like campaigns to, you know, get certain accounts suspended, and maybe like each account based on their own follower numbers or whatever. And I can tell you, I'm pretty sure having a verified badge helps you not get suspended because there's oh, yeah. no doubt in my oh, mind it's, it's, it's bougie they've tried to suspend yeah there's no doubt in mind they've tried to suspend me before and i just never have got suspended because i have the white the, the blue check um but That's chad true. water like you mentioned and a few other antifa accounts uh suspended this whole time weeks now they're the only ones i've seen andy no specifically point out to elon musk it really does seem like if andy no specifically said this person should get banned, then Elon Musk seemed to have listened to him. Because those are the only ones that have been permanently suspended. Again, number of leftist accounts have been suspended, probably mass reporting, but eventually I guess Twitter needs a real reason to suspend those people. So they, you know, they unsuspend them. But with the specific Andy No, uh, you know, fingered accounts, I guess they've looked really hard for a reason. I still would love to know the exact tweets that got these accounts suspended. I'm just I don't I don't see anything uh, so that would with Chad I actually know Chad Loader was one of the first people to be reporting I think they were the first ones to tweet about how there was a huge data breach in France for uh, like the whole Twitter but did, did did Twitter actually tell him that though or is that just his assumption uh, his assumption oh sorry their yeah we, it's, it's, I, it's, I it's want them. what uh, uh, they're they them oh oh I'm so, sorry yeah, I didn't know okay yeah yeah, yeah. um but I, I want Twitter to say what tweet got him to spend because clearly that is that is journalism. That's that's uh, no, I know it's Elon reporting. Musk so freedom of speech. Yeah, of course. Elon well, Musk what the intercept very, very clear the intercept that the said only that thing that'll get you suspended, according to Elon Musk, is calls to violence. Reporting on mm. a, a, a breach is not a call to violence. Yeah, I agree. They said that uh, Chad was uh, ban evading because they had a separate account that they logged into during their original ban. Um, but it was some weird bullshit excuse like that. There's an Intercept article that talks about how Andy No has basically been snitching on these leftists and whoever Andy No They're recommends. All snitches. Elon Musk. All the writer snitches. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all, absolutely. Yeah. All in 
know personally is these people better than me because they playing around with people's Twitter accounts. If you see, if you do something like that to me and get me suspended, you gotta come see me in the street. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> like I'm gonna like I don't know what the rest of these people. They be I notice these people be taking their Twitter suspensions much better. Like you know acting like it's this this light work. Fuck that. I built my Twitter built by brick. You get me suspended, come fucking see me. Like, we gotta, we have to fight. Like, we have to, it's gonna be a fucking raw and beat your ass over Twitter. Like, fuck, if we think about Instagram, whatever it is, I'm like, you playing around with people's, like, platforms and say, really had to fucking build and stuff and they do meaningful shit with, I don't know what, like, you silly, like, and I'm not, I'm beating, I'm beating, someone's, someone's getting their ass beat. That's all I know. That's all I, I don't know who they're getting their ass beat. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I, people, people should, people who are thinking of leaving Twitter because and Elon Musk. People who are leaving, who are like on their own, like not getting spent. People who are leaving Twitter because Elon Musk. If you do not do that, do not like look what mm-hmm. look what just happened. Two of the most prominent banned right wingers came back: Carl Benjamin of uh, AKA Sargon of Akkad and Lindsay J- uh, James Lindsay. And in a matter of days, <laughs> they're both screeching on their t- uh, Twitter accounts that they're gonna si- file lawsuits for defamation because everyone's calling oh, them groomers and pedophiles. <laughs> okay, Do okay, not so... keep Twitter. Use Elon Musk. <laughs> weaponize Elon Musk's politics against these motherfuckers because mm-hmm. they are self-immolating. They are melting I down. Yeah, I agree 100. percent I, I just gotta say this about Sargon of Cad because we've already explored James Lindsay. Everyone knows about him. Sargon of Cad is one of those motherfuckers who's all about lowering the age of consent and has mm-hmm. also had conversations with straight up people who at this point have been arrested for child pornography, but defended them. He defended the shit that they were saying. Like at, at a certain point, like Amos Yee was straight up making jokes about raping kids and all that kind of stuff. And 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 the Sargon of Cad was fine defending that, like and saying like, oh, it's just jokes oh no no no! it was just jokes he's joking he's, don't worry about these things and you're like no 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 okay and as matt is saying right now the reason he's flipping out on twitter is that he's like straight up like hey by the way uh, i i don't want people to post these like quotes don't post the quotes don't post the videos don't post the evidence basically is that i mean these 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 guys cannot take even the smallest spoonful of their own medicine they melt down. They have created harassment campaigns against people throughout their entire careers. And the second the tables are turned on them, they break down. And it's it's incredible, too, because these are two people with like 300,000 plus followers on Twitter. You think people would be running to their defense. James Lindsay gets like he's lucky if he breaks like 100 likes on his tweets who are these people that follow them? Are they even real? It doesn't seem like it. These people are, are 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 live in like paper houses. They have nothing. They can be taken down so easily. They got nothing. Yes. Mm. Yes. No. That's fact. It's all because any support for them is flimsy. Because at the end of the day, the kind of bullshit that they spew, people cannot even with their with their with their full chest, with their face, with their name, support that nonsense and and show themselves to be fans that and continue to walk amongst us in a regular. They can't like no matter the shit. Your little you know right wing supremacist echo chambers that you create online is not the real world. You cannot go go keep your job. Go go into the regular community and go interact with the rest of us talking that shit. And that's why at the end of the day they will never have the same kind of um support when it comes to this online. So that's why they hate Twitter so much because on Twitter is real. Like we can get I can show you my face and my name and my this and that and say this. This is not something I'm ashamed to say. But if you want to go be a bigot if your whole bag is bigotry you gotta hide in this like i said from the beginning and remember earlier what i said i gotta have my face there just so i could really fight you because it takes it it takes something away and that's what at the end of the day if, if the only people who support you are just a faceless nameless people who will not get behind that you on your own you ass out and that's why it's better for us to stay on twitter and bully them off because they're soft yeah. elon must own the whole shit and he out here you know <laughs> Just imploding every day. <laughs> also, also, you being on Twitter is is you know Elon Musk pretends all the time like he he constantly hypes up. Oh look, largest ever uh you know daily active user uh, amount. We are Twitter and is reduction being used. In hate speech apparently. I saw that graph. It was like Prager right. you style because it's he like reclassified speech. what hate speech <laughs> is. Know. That's why. I was, I was like, what is hate <laughs> speech? But, but, but like for you to but, be but like. My, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> but, but my point, my point, my point, bringing up him like propping up the, how many users they have, is that it's pointless in terms of 
Twitter's revenue model. Yeah. Who cares absolutely. how mm-hmm. many users you have if the advertisers don't want to spend the money with you? In fact, if you have a ton of users the site. and no one right and no one pays the for the servers. You're, yeah, so everyone should be using Twitter and just continue to advocate for people not to advertise on that website because it will give your company <laughs> terrible uh, PR. No, dead ass. We, we can take Twitter down. We can engagement. Well, that's my literal. That's the last thing I'm gonna say before Sunday. I hop off. That like before I before I hop off, y'all. But no, that's my last thing I'm gonna say. Like he always he like he's just he's just so not sharp. He always misses the fucking mm-hmm. point. Like the night when everyone's tweeting, like, oh, you know, the end in Twitter party, and he's like, Oh, you see, like, look at how many people are on here. And I'm like, Yeah, bro, that's why we're saying the shit's gonna crash. You done fired everybody who fucking maintains the infrastructure, and now it's over that's gonna crash. Bro, that's the point. Like, that's what we're fucking saying. It's gonna crash. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like that's the perfect cap on a show that that's called the Leftist Mafia, yeah. right? We, hey, Elon, yeah. we're gonna take your website out, all right? <laughs> wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Before we before we end, we have to use our powers as the Leftist Mafia to uncancel one person. Who are we uncanceling? Who gets it? Who oh, who uncancel. gets uncancel? I, it's hard, right? I, I got a recommendation. Oh. Okay, okay. Will Smith. It's been enough oh, time. Yeah, Please yeah, apologize. Yeah, what does Will Smith have canceled? The, what, for the slap? The, the whole slap <laughs> thing. I mean, <laughs> he's apologized by now. I think he should I, I think he should be I back vote. into. I vote yay. I want to uncancel Will Smith, and then I want to propose and we can address it next time. I propose we cancel Amy Schumer for coming out and wanting to cancel him without that bullshit she was talking about. And she was like, oh, I couldn't. I couldn't. Oh, I needed to take some time off from oh, this Oh, God. Slap. Yeah, so. Cancel I'm with, I'm with you on that. Thank you. Yep. I'm I'm with you on that. She's been canceled in my mind since like yep. 2014. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, great y'all. This is amazing. Wait, before you leave, plug your shit. Do do the thing. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. A lot of people um, watch. Follow me at Miss O'Lurin on all things, M-S-O-L-U-R-I-N. Follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on all the things. I have a sub stack called the Lurinati that you should subscribe to. I put out an essay every month. I put out one today. I just put out an op-ed in, in the nation about why I'm not leaving Twitter and neither should you. And I have an op-ed coming mm. in and Teen Vogue in like a week. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. Bye, y'all. To Lou. See ya. Uh, who wants to go next? Oh, I got to reframe all these things now. Oh, I'll be jumping off now as well. So I'll go next. I'm the Rational National. Hey, what's up? Uh, the Rational I'm I'm like t- I'm like falling asleep in the chair right now. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> East Coasters. <laughs> My son gets me up at like five in the morning. It's insane. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, you know, at David Dole on uh on You're twitter weak. d-o-e-l You're weak. <laughs> what i've been just a dad too that's, I, that's I, matt i don't know how do you is it coffee like what do you do how do you I, do I it i don't know i drink a lot of soda i don't okay, i don't go to, even, oh. even, even when i'm not streaming though i i don't usually go to bed early maybe maybe one night every now and then i'll crash before like i don't know one but i would say my normal time at conking out it's like maybe two three and then i'm up wow. to get my kids to school probably around uh, luckily i sleep in in the morning uh and mm. uh you know the partner takes care of my wife takes care of the kids and gets them ready but i take them to school so i'm up at like uh, i don't know like 6 30 7 a.m so i'm not up at five i i was there but now i'm well not. i'll get i'll get up at five and then fall back asleep to like yeah seven ish um but still it's it's i don't know I, I can't imagine having two kids. One's enough. <laughs> I'll t- I'll tell you this: once once you have one, the, the other the one is just like it doesn't. It really doesn't even. What I can't even you, imagine. It's that you could simple. add as many kids as you want now, and it won't make a difference. Just keep. No. You can just... Not the way I I I, I overthink. <laughs> after, I after it doesn't work for me. <laughs> the only difference for me would be, uh, you know, two two is no different from one. But if you add more than two, then you probably have to get if you have a car, probably have to get a new car because. More than two kids ain't gonna fit in the mm. back. But other than that, well, I guess you might need another bedroom. Yeah, if you add one more kid and have two, there's no difference between one or two kids. But beyond that, yeah, there's some life <laughs> change, I guess. <laughs> I'll stay on for the rest of you exiting. Oh, right. Okay. All right. So sure. So um I guess I'll go next after that whole spiel. Uh <laughs> YouTube.com slash Matt Binder. Uh, please subscribe to me there. Twitch.tv slash Matt Binder. Also follow me there. I have two regular 
weekly live streams. Um, one is called Doomed, that's usually on Tuesday nights, and that's the politics show where I usually focus on right-wing uh, media, reactionary movements, uh, taking on the, the white supremacists, neo-Nazis, uh, tackling right-wing misinformation and right-wing conspiracy theories. And then uh, recently moved to Sunday nights is my crypto show, Scam Economy, uh, one of the only 24-7 anti-crypto shows out there. Uh, so if you hate cryptocurrency and are looking for the show for you, check out Scam Economy at scameconomy.com and on those uh, channels. And follow me on Twitter at Matt Binder, where you can uh, join me in outing all the OK Groomer conservatives who all happen to be uh, groomers or groomer adjacent themselves. Follow that up. Uh, Mike Illuminati, do you want to take it away? Do you want to go first, Illuminati? Sure. Uh, hey, I'm Blair or the Illuminati, mainly YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Illuminati. Um, I upload three times a week. I do mainly, um, I guess like documentary style videos. So Mondays are going to be multi-level Mondays where we mainly focus on scams and all sorts of, uh, pyramid schemes and other tropes like that. And then Wednesdays and Fridays, we have a show called The Corporate Casket, which is where bad businesses go to die. And we just focus on general corruption of businesses, corporations, individuals, charities, you name it, we do it. Mike? I am Mike. Uh, you can subscribe on YouTube to The Humanist Report. And yeah, I upload every single day with the exception of Sundays usually. Usually you have a couple of videos per day. Um, yeah, please go and subscribe. We're trying to hit 400K. Not going to happen this year, but that's kind of like the goal for next year. So yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, so many people in my chat have been like, wait, that's that's the Illuminati? The Illuminati is live right there? I, like, I think <laughs> they thought that like <laughs> you were a cartoon character or something. Um. Oh, apparently Kanye West, one of his uh, tweets just got deleted. The one with the uh, uh, the swastika uh, yeah. as well as, yeah, the Star, the star yeah. of David. Yeah. Good, uh, censor makes him. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, that's pretty intense <laughs> anti-Semitism. Anyway, yeah. Hey, everyone. I should probably plug myself last. Uh, I'm Lance of the Surfs. Uh, I do uh, dumpster fire comedy political shit. You can find me at twitch.tv slash TV, or you can come to the proprietary webpage at theservs.tv and find everything from the Patreon to the Discord to the Reddit. Oh, I, I will plug the Reddit because I actually have something that has nothing to do with me. It's called the Goolery. If you go to the Reddit, I'm just trying to stack receipts of all the fucked up shit that right-wingers do. So if you have a right-winger who's like, hey, by the way, I, I'm not a pedophile. And then it's like, well, actually, Matt Gates, the, this is pretty bad. Um, they put receipts of that online. So come to uh, the Goolery. It's a fun time. Well, this has been fun. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> See you all next week. Yeah. Bye. Take Bye. care, folks. Bye, guys. <laughs>